Oh, Hilda, am I glad to see you. Am I glad to see you. Small white slash, please. Oh, sorry. I dare say you're wondering what I'm doing here behind the counter. Well, I'm standing in That's for... That's a brown. Oh, yes, sorry, yes, sorry. I'm standing in for Rini while she's gone to court for this uh, licence thing, you know. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, thank you. That'll be... Uh, 13p. 13p. No, I'm expecting her back any minute. Uh, but, uh, well, any second, as a matter of fact. But the thing is, I've got this important... Uh, Engagement at the Gob Centre, and I just wondered if you could possibly stand in for me while... Well, for her, really. Sorry. 15, 20, 30, 40, and 10 is 15. Yep. Could you? It wouldn't be for very long. I mean, I'd shut the shop. Oh, it's a very busy time with people... Pardon? Look, I've applied for a job in this shop several times, but I've never been considered smart enough, trustworthy even. So why should I do it any favours now? Not it, Hilda, me. Well, Rita Bradshaw should have made proper arrangements, shouldn't she? See, she's not fit to run the shop as it is, let alone as an off-licence. Oh, nothing personal, of course. Bast! Are you really telling the court, Mrs Walker, that the presence of a tiny off-licence, and that's all it would be, would have serious consequences for your own business? <laughs> no, of course I'm not. Then what are you telling the court? There's absolutely no need for an off-licence in the street, none whatsoever. But isn't that for the residents to say? And many of them, according to the applicant's petition, would disagree with you. Are you really suggesting that they are waiting part-lipped for an off-licence to open so that they can rush in and buy uh, whatever? Please confine yourself to answering questions, Mrs Walker. It's Mr Robson's job to ask them. I'm sorry. Well, yes, I am suggesting that they say your establishment does not satisfy the alcoholic requirements of everyone in the area. People who want to buy a bottle... They've taken a very long time to reach that conclusion, haven't they? I and my dear husband, until his death, have been my host of the Rover's Return for more than 30 years. And not once in that time has there been a suggestion that our service was inadequate. The very opposite is true. We were, and are still, complimented on the breadth of our service. But uh, times and tastes change, Mrs Walker. Yes, and the Rover's change with them, and sometimes in anticipation of them. I put it to you, Mrs. Walker, that Miss Bradshaw's off-license would be a welcome amenity to the area. Welcome? To whom? Oh, to Miss Bradshaw, obviously. <laughs> and to those friends of hers who signed the petition. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. You may step down. Thank you. She did well, didn't she? Very. Even though she told a pack of lies. Yes, she is. Very convincing lies. Yeah. Hey, there's a little job waiting for you at home. What's that? Cheering up your Hilda. She's very low. Very low. I'll finish it fine first. It's on my list. See, it's all to do with Stan being without the tools of his trade, like. What has? Hilda, being de depressed. Well, among other things. Among other things being mainly Stan? Yeah, I suppose so. Look, uh, it wouldn't be possible to build him another cart, would it, Mr Fairclough? I mean, a window cleaner without a cart is like a bee without a buzz, isn't he? Anything's possible. Ah, but Stanley likes being without a buzz, doesn't he? That is sadly true. One more bet, keep that company. Hey, I've only got the one pair of hands, you know. All right. And you would agree with Mrs Walker, would you, Miss Lynch, that uh, the Rover's return more than adequately serves the licensing needs of the area? Oh, I would. Well, it follows, doesn't it? It follows? Well, Mrs Walker being such an efficient and up-to-the-minute landlady. I see. Thank you very much. Uh, just stay where you are, will you? Because I've no doubt my friend would like to ask you some questions. Oh, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> this question of wine sales, Miss Lynch. Yes. You're not saying you sell a lot of wine at the Rover's Return, are you? Not a lot, no. How much? Well, it's hard to say. It used to be more. Oh, uh -huh. why is that? Well, when the warehouse was going across the street, it burned down, you know. The employees of this warehouse weren't a collection of winos, were they? No, just the bosses. No, what I mean is, they'd send across to us for a bottle when they're having posh lunches. Whining and dining customers. They sent across to the Rover's Return when they were whining and dining important customers? Oh, yes. And could you supply them? Oh, yes. Oh, you stock expensive wines then, too, do you? Vintage wines, not just the popular plonk. Well, I don't know about vintage, but fairly expensive. How much? Oh, at least a pound. <laughs> a pound, eh? And uh, you think that's expensive for a bottle of wine these days? 
I do. And supposing the bosses at the warehouse didn't much care for your pound bottle wines, where did they go for more exotic fare? Well, in that case, we sent out to a selling out shop for it. Thank you, Miss Lynch. Thank you. You can go back to your seat. Uh, that's my case, Your Worships. But if you would bear with me just a minute or two longer. Sorry, Mrs. Watson. I did your best. It wasn't very good, but it was your best. Just have to hope he makes up for it. Who is he? The anti-drink man. One can't always be choosy about one's bedfellows. Hello, Chuck. Uh, I've just come in. No, I've not come for you, Stanley. Give us a couple of pies when you've a minute, please. Well, Do you want a drink while you're here? No, thanks. I'll have another one. Keep an edge on me appetite. Please you know. yourself. Shove that on in little order. I'll pay you when things brighten up. Yeah, if they ever do. Oh, they will, though. They will. See what I mean? About Hilda. I mean, she's not herself. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, will I take for a pint out of this, lovely? Oh, go on. What's the odds? Might as well give him the change, you know. Ooh. Hey, other love, aren't you? Stop him for one, then. No, no, thanks very much, but uh, I'm not in a drinking mood. Nothing wrong with the darling. Oh, just life, Len. Especially my flipping life. <laughs> See what I mean? It's definitely a candidate for the cut. And that big balloon doesn't help much. Do you reckon she's depressed because he's lost his anchor? Well, and the consequences. Like Stanley having the best excuse in the world to indulge in his favourite hobby, boozing. I mean, she has a rough time of it, Hilda, you know. It's not easy to get her down. Go on, Langton. You are. We've got a job to do. We're we flipping Bell Hour. Hey, do you need me? I know. What were all that about? I don't know exactly, but I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere up there there was an angel practising takeoffs for a quick trip in this vicinity. Uh, what's this? I thought you'd never ask. That is the shop key. I've done my stint. I have important business elsewhere. And as your is next of kin, you are, aren't you? No. Where well, you are for now. When I left, there was a large queue of angry people all demanding brown bread and victuals. <laughs> Irene, you'll kill him. I don't think so. Why? Well, you know what they sell of about key holder? They're responsible. Surely there are enough purveyors of beer, wine and spirits without adding another corrupter of our moral fabric to the list. Do you think he means me? <laughs> I'm afraid he does. Look at the Latin countries. Look at France. I think you've made your point, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, only for a few seconds more, sir. I'm sorry, I think you've had more than your fair share of the court's time. Thank you, sir. I, I'm much obliged for your courtesy and indulgence. But somebody has to call a spade a spade. Drink is the devil's brew. He concocted it on the hobs of hell. Those were the first words I learned from my father. A minister of the church, God rest his soul. That is the application, sir. Thank you. Decision time. Got your fingers crossed, Mrs. Walker. Noshy in our way. Still, we do say it keeps body and soul together. Like bitter beer, as your Stanley will testify. Still down there, is he? Well, where else would he be when he's got no work to do? Certainly not sat here worrying about it. Ah, that's one thing you've got to admit about Stanley. His life is based on some very simple truths. Like, you go out the front door, you turn right for the rover's return. So what do you want, then? How do you know it's not a social call? Cos you never paid me a social call in your life. Or anybody else, for that matter. You've got a very poor opinion of me, Hilda. Mm. Don't suppose it bothers you? No, not much. Hey, you know them wheels off Stan's late lamented cart? Yeah, what about them? Well, I'll give you a quid for them. Each? Pair? Too by the heck. When a body's down and out, that's time to stick the boot in. Best I love. No fear of reprisals, then. Come on, what do you say? Go on, you might as well. I mean, they're no use to him, are they? And they're hardly mementories of a vanished business empire. Oh. Where are they? Backyard. Right. There you are, then. 
Buy yourself a stick of licorice and a bag of sherbet. Well, are we all agreed? Something seems to be happening, Mrs. Walker. About time. Oh, I wish they'd stop whispering and decide one way or the other. I think you've got your wish. Well, uh, after long and careful consideration, the magistrates have decided in the circumstances to um, grant the application. What is it? They said you've won. What? No! Oh, sorry. Well, you, you can't win them all, Mrs. Walker. That is one of the most defeatist sentiments in the English language. Standing court. Sorry about that, Mrs. Walker. You can't win them all. The question is, Mr. Smith, do you win any? She seems rather upset with me. You and me both, love. And I have to live with her. I'll near as damn it. They're in league with the Brewers, madam. And where will they be going off to now, eh? Not the co-op tea rooms. Oh, no. The nearest boozer, that's where they'll be going. Double gins all round and three cheers for the devil. And who'll be driving their cars home afterwards, eh? Ask yourself that, madam. Do as I say, not as I do. The law's motto. Well, I'm sure you're very right, Mr. Jenkins, but if you would excuse us, come out, bed. Sit down, love. Mrs. Walker? Well, that's all over and done with. Oh, what a palaver. Eh? The British justice grinds exceedingly slow, Bert, but fairly on the whole. That is a matter of opinion. Well, at least we know where we stand. Poles apart, dear. <sighs> Mrs. Walker, I, I, I don't know whether you're going straight home or not, but we have a taxi ordered. Thank you, we have one ourselves. Come along, Bert. One thing about Mrs. Walker, she can bear a grudge. See you in court sometime. Any use for a broken olive branch? Oh, she'll get over it. You think so? Come on. Well, how did you get on? Mrs. Walker. We lost. You never. We did. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, tough. What happened, Mrs. Walker? Bench full of grocers, was he? Yeah, well, it happens. I had a bench full of tobacconists, you know, and I was up for nicking fags. Give me six months. The occupations of the bench were as much a mystery to me as their thinking. We were found wanting. Some of us more than others. <coughs> You're blaming me, aren't you, for losing? Don't be silly. Oh, yes, you are. You've been giving me the flaming fish eye ever since I stepped out of that witness box. You are exaggerating. I must admit I was a trifle annoyed at your simplicity in letting yourself be trapped. I only told the truth. We don't sell enough posh wines. We hardly sell any ordinary ones, for that matter. Well, you needn't have laboured the point. I didn't. Now, look, Mrs Walker, I know you're looking for a scapegoat, but it's not going to be me. I told the truth and nothing but the truth in that court, which is what I was there to do. Nobody's surprised you lost, you know. They all expected it. Don't be ridiculous. Of course they did. You hadn't a leg to stand on. What's wrong with an off-licence in this street, anyway? Now, you just objected to it out of spite. And that's the truth and all. And if you want to fire me for saying that, well, that's your privilege. Yeah, well, as there's uh, very little chance of celebration, I'll uh, just nip down the library. Come on, Stan. I'll let her know, eh? Come on. <sighs> I'd better be off and all. Yeah, <laughs> <Ta -ra. laughs> I don't blame Bert, you know. Seemed like it to me. That happened to me, Mrs Walker. Did everybody expect me to lose? Well, silence speaks louder than words. But I did not oppose Miss Bradshaw out of spite. It's just that I happen to be rather proud of this public house. It's, it's not just a place to buy drink like an off-license. It's, it's a meeting place, a social hub. Oh, it's a home for some people. And I felt that its integrity, its position, its responsibility were being challenged. And so I defended it. And that was my only motive, really. So now you know. Yeah. Hey. Do you believe her? 
I think so. She thinks a lot about this pub, deep down. I'm very pleased for you. Thanks very much. The only thing you have to do now is to buy some stock and then sell it. Oh, I don't think you'll have much difficulty around here. It's hardly an abstemious community. In fact, a platoon from the Salvation Army is reputed to have vanished without trace not all that far from here. <laughs> Good. By the way, what have you done with Ernest? Well, I haven't done anything with him, love. He's gone to see about a job or something. Oh, has he? wonder if he's got back yet. Uh, and congratulations again. I had no doubt you'd win. No doubt at all. Bye. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Walker. My condolences. Good afternoon, Mrs. Walker. Could I have a packet of my usual tea? Yes, certainly. Mm. Thank you. Will you put it on my account? Well, you don't actually have an account at the moment. Not a current account, that is. You haven't been in the shop for some time. You're not saying you can't reopen it, are you? Uh, no. Very well, then. Um, will there be anything else? No, thank you. <laughs> May I say something? Feel free. You heard me tell the court today that I had been in the licensed trade for more than 30 years. Yes. That's a lot of experience. Yes, it is. Mm. If you ever feel that you'd like to avail yourself of that experience, I'd be delighted to operate. Thank you very much. My pleasure. After all, I have set certain standards at the Rover's return, and it would be a pity if they were undermined at the opposite end of the street. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Ooh, just look at you, Stanley. Tea time nearly, and you're still sodden with drink. I mean, apart from it being a waste of money, what you haven't got, it's a waste of your life. And you haven't got that long, you know, Chuck. Neither of us have. So don't you think you ought to try and make an effort to do something with what's left? I mean, what happened to all them dreams you had when you was a lad? Like being an engine driver or Mother Donald Campbell or something? Well, you couldn't have wanted to be a window cleaner. Nobody dreams about being a window cleaner except George Formby. But seeing as you are one, why don't you try and be the best window cleaner what there is? I mean, you never know. You could win the Duke of Edinburgh's award for window cleaning. But just for once, Stan, just for once, couldn't you try and do something that I could be proud of as well as yourself? Stanley, are you listening to me? Look, I haven't got a cart, have I? How can I be a window cleaner without a cart? Oh, shut up. I'm tired. Ooh, what's the use? on both sides. Now, who could have done that? That's my wheel. You what? Both wheels in the old cart. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Hey, that's not bad, is it? Well, who would have thought? Who would have thought, eh? Where are you going? I just thought he might have called in here if he had got a job to celebrate. Well, somehow I think we'd only go straight home now, don't you? Yes. <laughs> hey, it was you, wasn't it? Huh? Hey, get off, what are you doing? Oh, thanks for doing that, Cart. It was just the job. Oh, well, uh, I only did the wheels. It was his idea. Oh, were it? 
Hey, you lovely land fair clothes. What the hell's going on? <laughs> They've made Stan a new car. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he, he painted his name on it. Shit, call me, yeah. Uh... Oh, All right, Hilda, I don't mind getting kissed. Thanks very much, John. Oh. What about me? Why, what are you oh, done? Well. I told him I browned off, you mate. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, thanks very much, Eddie, but uh, I don't want folks saying I'm promiscuous. <laughs> I'm very here, Hilda. <laughs> oh, get him a pint, Jim, that, and everybody else will know. Yeah, oh, wait, I've come that. out without me purse. Well, you can have one tick, love, and if Mrs Walker says out, refer her to me. I've got her eating out my arms. Oh, right, what you're having? Oh, I'll I'll be be thanks very much, and that's very kind of you. Yeah. Listen, you'll have to go back to work now, you know, Stan. I oh, know, I'll have to face it. Oh, you big daft, <laughs> love. Get him a pint and all, but... Come on, Well... Well, I went to the job centre. Yes, I know. Did, did you...? Not exactly, no. Oh. I've got an interview. Oh, good. Where? You'll never guess. Don't tease. Tell me. Over at the warehouse. Cheers, Elder Lodge. Cheers, Cheers. 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 On Granada Plus, contestants pit their wits, minds, and bodies against each other in another grueling round of the Krypton Factor. What did he call you then? All sorts, love. Same here. Yes, I've got to be honest. I'm not surprised. Hey, dear. The depth some folk will sink to pinching newspapers. Not <gasps> pinching it and putting it in. Well, how do I know that? I mean, that's only your story when all's said and done. Don't be so silly. Ah, that's what they all say. I deliver in TV times, sis. Now, it might be a daft thing to come out with, but why don't you deliver them when you deliver morning papers? Because the wholesale is late, and we've only just got them half an hour since. It were a daft thing to come yeah, out with. it was. Yeah. But we're still friends. Oh, definitely. Have a shove to your cross road and see if that van driver's still looking, seeing as he's better than now. Smiling at me, actually. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, give us a book sheet TV times and you can have him. <laughs> Looks rather nice. But if you fancy him that much, why don't you get a job over there? Oh, is that what that notice is about? Button haulers, finishers and presses. Bye, talk about a vicious circle. Our button hauler over there when it was Alliston's raincoat factory. Oh, how long ago was that? Don't ask, love. You needn't have done that. That, my love, is the one thing that keeps me going. Doing jobs I don't need to do. It won't be for long. If I get the job. Ernest. Mm -hmm. Ernest, will you look at me, please? With the greatest of pleasure. Now, stop being brave. <laughs> I'm glad you said that and not me. Oh, Ernest, I'm being serious. I just can't be doing with you like this. I mean, one minute you're the soul of optimism and the next you're so far down in the dumps I wonder whatever's going to become of us. Oh, no. It's what's known as the human condition. Say after me, I am going to get the job 
over the road. I am going to get the job over the road. And mean it. And mean it. Oh, sorry, love, you caught me at the wrong moment. But why are you so pessimistic after what they said at the job centre? They didn't say much, did they? They didn't know much. What they did say was very heartening. I mean, they'd been asked for a man with a knowledge of bookkeeping, honest, efficient, loyal, all qualities which you possess in abundance. Oh, oh all right. I'm sorry to have to keep going on like this, but someone has to convince you that you're not dead yet. You know, it really would finish me. If you didn't care. There's not much chance of that. You are the breadwinner. Yeah, all right, well, I've uh, just abandoned the job temporarily. Thank you. That is a slight improvement. When that door closes, I shall turn into a human whirlwind. Wash, shave, get myself changed. Uh, oh, what time's your appointment? Two. Ooh, what time is it now? Quarter to twelve, why? Well, don't get changed yet. You know that suit creases. Sit down for a quarter of an hour, read the paper, and get yourself a nice, quiet lunch. And when you've had your lunch, make yourself look very smart, Go across the road and what? Get the job. Right. Do you know, I've always fancied working in a dress shop. And here's me pounding away at a broken down old typewriter in a novel. What? A novel. H O V E L, novel. Don't show your ignorance. No, I'll swap you any day. Oh, you wouldn't if you knew. It's one long complaint. <laughs> Don't know you're born, you. There is nowhere in this world, nowhere. Well, has as many grotty customers as a garment shop. Oh, get a garment shop. They come in here, 16 stone if they're an ounce. You ask them what size they are, they look you straight in the face and say 14. So you give them 14 to try on. Do you know what they say when they come out of the fitting room? Label's wrong in that, love. I've told you before. Several times. Right, blow you then. <gasps> well. I must say you're in a better mood than when I last saw you. God, please you, can I? When I'm miserable, you don't like it. When I'm happy, it's still wrong. I never said it was wrong. Unusual, yes, but not wrong. Ah, I am unusual, aren't I? I'm a co-respondent, aren't I? And you don't get many of them down at the disco. And for that, grateful thanks. I'm only jealous. It's not everyone who gets named in a divorce case. And you're happy to be one of the chosen few. Can I help you? Oh, don't mind me, love. I'm just gossiping. Oh, is the other lady in? The older one? Mrs. Howard? Well, I don't know her name, but she was in last Friday. I came in for an evening skirt. Mrs. Ferguson, my name is. There was one I rather liked. Uh, it was black, pleated, crimp. Here it is. And you've made up your mind, have you? Well, uh, could I have a little think? Oh, it's awful, isn't it? I think it's rather nice. Oh, I don't mean this. I, I mean me. Would you like to try it on? Oh, I did last Friday. It was a lovely fit. Oh. I'll take it. Oh, are you like this when you're buying clothes? Well, I must admit I get a bit nervous, but I think that's parting with money more than anything. Oh, I'm terrible. If I didn't force myself, I'd be walking the streets stark naked. Mm. There you are. There's your change. Hope you will be very happy. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> Did I tell you what do you speak of? Oh, you've seen nothing yet, love. <laughs> And by some strange coincidence, I'm looking for an evening skirt myself. Seeing as my husband's taking me to the Gatsby tonight, and for some funny reason, none of my dresses will go anywhere near me. Gatsby? I'd come with you, but uh, I suppose with my reputation with fellas, you wouldn't want me there. Listen, love, I don't want to destroy your newfound sense of confidence. I mean, if it was me, I'd, I'd rather have you like this. But speaking as a mature married lady, what's heading for motherhood? Don't let Elsie hear you talking like this. She's liable to knock your flipping head off. Ah, you think I was made of money or something? Oh, not exactly, love. You'd look more attractive if you were. And anyway, you don't exactly have to be rolling it to lend us a five till payday, now do you? You know, to look at us, do you think you were the one with the money in the bank? Oh, well, that's because I spent a bob or two on clothes, that's all. Have you been working in a meat market or something? If you don't want it, I'll take it back. You know, you're turning into a miser, fair club. Oh, tough, tough. Oh, whatever happened to that fellow that used to give a girl a good time? 
I can hear it now. It all comes back to me. When you're with Fairclough, you're with the very best. All you have to do is ask whatever happened to him. You're looking at him. What do you want, proof or something? Yeah, that's it. I want proof. Take us out tonight. Tonight? Tonight, before you're trying to skip the country. And I don't want Jackson's chippy. I want the very best. Unless, of course, you've forgotten now. Of course I haven't forgotten now. I'll pick you up at eight o'clock. All right. I'll be ready for you. Do you know, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> and if I come back and find another card school, it's down the road for the lot of you. <laughs> British working men, eh? What? Oh, British working men all the same, aren't they, Jack? You in charge of that load of layabouts? I'm in charge of all the layabouts. I own the place. Mr. Baldwin? That's right, Jack. Mr. Baldwin. And what are you supposed to be doing? Uh, unloading. Then look as if you're unloading! Mr. Bishop. Yeah? My name's Baldwin. You're supposed to see me across the road at two o'clock. Yeah? Yeah, well, by the way it's going, we'll be lucky if it's ready by two o'clock next year. Can we chat now? Yeah, sure, sure. Oh. My wife had to dash out. She handles that thing, you're lucky. I get to do it now, yes. Ah. If your little lady's anything like mine, she'll be looking all over the place for that. Yeah, yeah, she will. Right, uh, Ernest Bishop, right? Right. Three Coronation Street, age? Uh, 46. Any prison record? No. Uh, no. no. I have to ask that question because most people have these days. <laughs> I understand from the job centre you had a photographic business but you jacked it in. That's correct, yes. That means you know all about bookkeeping and about money. Well, I know how scarce it is. That's true enough. That means you respect it. Yeah. And other people's? More than my own. Yeah, well, I was expecting you to say that. But you did say it as if you meant it. I'm looking for a wages clerk, nothing startling to kick off with, but it could grow. Now, I don't know what you've heard, but I'm making shirts and denim trousers, and with what's coming in from Taiwan at the moment, it's got to be a cheap operation. But good. Mm -hmm. That's why I want the right sort of people around me. If I get the right sort of people and I go places, they go with me, right? Don't mind where I start. Good. I understand you do a bit of Bible punching. Yeah, I am a lay preacher, yes. Yeah, well, you'll be mixing with girls, mostly. Now, I don't know if you know the sort of girls who work in shirt factories, but they're not the sort that drink their tea with their little finger sticking out, do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, they're good kids, but they speak their mind. They've got things on their mind you and me have never heard of. They won't upset you, will it? No, no. Oh, I may look as if I'd had a sheltered life, but I haven't really. Oh, good. Right, well, that's settling. Sort of disturbing, whatever it was you were doing. Uh, it's all right. I'll put you on a short list. Got a couple of other people I've got to see, but if they don't measure up, you could be on your own. Oh, look, don't get up. Save yourself. If you get that job, you're going to need all the energy you can get. Come on, Langton, let's be having here. Yeah, get out there and earn some pennies. Oh, now what have you been buying? An evening skirt, like I said, on account of my waist expanding. And the blouse, which if you don't like, I'll give you a good hiding. I like it. Oh, he knows which side his bread's butter. I thought you were saving up for your baby. Oh, don't blame me. She offered us a couple of tickets for the Gatsby tonight. It's cost me 40 quid. 40 quid. You never give any tickets in my direction, do you? Funny you should say that, because I've got two in my handbag right now, and I thought, shall I give them to my lovely boss, I thought. Then I thought, no, very not. Elsa might not like it. What's she got to do with it? We've got to be careful, haven't we? Oh, we have that. Who are you thinking of taking? Well, I'll find somebody. Give me it. Hey, come on. Who are you thinking of taking? Well, let's see. Who needs a night out then? Uh, Ken Barlow? Mm. What a good idea. I couldn't have thought of anybody better. Oh, well, come on then. Tra, tra. Tra, tra. Ta-da. Hey. No, no, no. That's worked out very nicely, is that? Now, if I can just think of a way of separating Ken from others. You crafty devil. I might just come myself and take Len off your hands. That's a good idea. Kid, I'm full of them. Here's to a night to remember. Well, you know what they say. Everything comes to her who waits.
Oh, I can't see him picking me. He was a very high-powered gentleman. Which makes him an eccentric. So you never know your luck. Thanks very much. You mean he might just be mad enough to take me on? Yeah, yeah, something like that. They take decisions on whims, you know, these tycoons. I mean, um, look, at, uh, look at Sir Julius Berlin. When he was over there, took one look at me and said I had the makings of an executive genius. No, it's not quite the same with Baldwin, is it? He wants me for a wages clerk. Oh, what's wrong with that? I mean, what is the Governor of Bank of England but a highfalutin wages clerk? True. Oh, go on, Fred, don't be rotten. I'm not being rotten. I'm a potman, aren't I? Can no more go to pub than flight up moon. Of course you could, you know, all prices. It's not a question of the prices, it's all this hosting, all this entertaining. I mean, look at you. I'm not exactly like you, am I? Fred, you are not supposed to look like me. I mean, you're a fella. And what does it matter what you look like, any road? I mean, this is a back street pub, not one of your fancy town places. It's a fancy town place for Mrs Walker, isn't it? Happen so, but Mrs Walker isn't here. And when she's away, we've got to meet her wishes. You know you are, don't you, Fred? A crawler. Happen so. <coughs> hey, this, uh, this is the rover's return, isn't it? If you're talking about this one, she's jumped the gun. She thought she was going out, and she isn't. And quite right, too. There's no place like your own fireside. Or, in my case, Uncle Albert's. Two bottles, your best pale ale, please, have. Hey, I thought you were going to Gatsby, Will I? Oh, whatever gave you that idea. Providing I can get Uncle Albert in bed by nine o'clock, I am going to spend the evening in the delicious company of Shirley MacLaine. Mind you, she'll be in a box in the corner of the room, but I'll be doing my best to get in there with her. I wonder who Len's talk. Hey, Bet, you're all right if you want to go. I'll manage. No, it's all right, thanks, Fred. I've changed my mind. And so could you. If you don't get Uncle Albert in bed by nine o'clock, come back in. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just the way I've got with words. Well, what did I say? What did you say? I'll take my coat off and leave it over the back of the chair. That's what you said. It's not a working men's club, you know. Listen, I've been in this place when it's been worse than any working men's club. I shouldn't boast about it, love. You're liable to get this bad wrap round your head. Well, well. Good evening, good evening, good evening. And may I say what a very great pleasure it is to welcome such distinguished guests to our humble palace of entertainment. Thank you. Where's Ken Barlow? Hey, couldn't come. Oh, I worship. Who have you brought? Elsie. Elsie. Well, well, well. How nice to see you. Yes, it uh, must be. I hear you still singing. Oh, yeah. Gary, now the odd pro, you know. This is Mount Sally Carry on, isn't it? Ella Fitzgerald, Alice Bay. Yeah, makes you wonder how they can keep going, doesn't it? Mind you, I'm here, and Lena's up her own in this elf. Anyway, what have you got to lose as hard as you paid for tickets? Ah, well, as soon as you've come, I'm going to sing your song. What's this about you not paying for the tickets? Well, I wanted to, didn't I, Ray? Did Yekka's like? you be smashed a flipping hand on. <laughs> well, what are we having? Lime juice and soda, or just soda? Shut up, she's singing my song. The minute you walked in the joint, I could see you were a man of distinction, a real big spender. Good looking, so refined. Say, wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? Go on, I don't care. That's what you like. Now, you know what mine is, love? A tall, blonde, rich fellow with ice and lemon. <laughs> Could I have a medium sherry, please? Bye, oh, yeah, you've got your feet on ground. <laughs> well, I'm realistic enough to know that nobody's going to buy me a man. <laughs> I know, I'm a dreamer, I never lose hope. Can I have a gin and tonic? I've said it, I'm to have what you like. We're well, back to that fella again. Is it your birthday? Me what? Well, it's your birthday with the drinks. No, I just feel like buying around. I feel good. Oh, fancy. Well, I, I'd have thought with... Go on, finish it. Oh. You'd have thought with my troubles, I'd have a face as long as a fiddle. They're not troubles, are they? Having a fella fancies you something to be happy about. Well, I can't see that you can feel very happy about breaking up a marriage. It was already broken. Thank you. Now, where have I heard that before? I don't care what you've heard before. It happens to be true. So your mum and dad won't feel too bad about it? No. When they get to know. Is that enough? More than enough. Hello. Ah, don't tell me. Shirley MacLaine ran off with another fella. Yeah, Uncle Albert, actually. Ah, that I can understand. He decided that he wanted to watch a film too, and that I couldn't stand. He's got this unbreakable habit of talking through the plot. You know, not the dull bits, he keep quiet for those, but let anyone try to say anything vital, and he's off. My mum will like that. Is that why you left home? Sort of. <laughs> you and me both. 
So, Bet, I have decided to take you up on your offer of a scintillating evening, and we'll start with Alpha Bitter. No sooner said than done, and seeing as she's in the chair, she's paying. And then we'll have a little kitty, and we'll have a little sing-song, and I'll tell you all them jokes I can't tell in front of me Auntie Nelly. How does that sound? Marvellous, oh, marvellous. I know, Mrs Walker's enjoying herself in Jersey. Right. And else with the mates at the Gatsby. And, and, and I'm here. And yes, you're not going to spoil it, Fred. We're still going to enjoy ourselves. <laughs> My love for you, you ought to know, well, haven't I told you so? Do you run to another drink or do I have to start by my own? Oh, why, uh, when are you ready, Jack? Well, it must have been a terrible disappointment to you when you found out the booze wasn't free. Hey, do you want a drink or a flipping good idea? Oh, I bet you don't give those away for now, either. No, sir. What's your pleasure? Uh, pints and a gin and tonic. Must be a great disappointment to you. <laughs> oh, you'll go far, you will. Well, what about it? <laughs> Nothing a fella would understand. Go back to sleep, love. I wasn't asleep listening to the music. What music? Are you jealous? Oh, you are shrewd, you are. You know, there's nothing I'd like better than to work for you. For insults and peanuts. Mind you, she deserves it. You know, if you'd have worked your cards right, you could have married me. Oh, you don't begrudge me one little stroke of luck, do you? This is impending fatherhood. It's gonna have some effect. Who's that fella Rita's with? Oh, he's now like you. He smiles when he's pain. Definitely showbiz. Oh, definitely. It's either Lou Grade or Dennis Ealy. Both of them dealing dreams. That's what I mean. Ah. Oh. Give over, she's <laughs> coming. Stop it. Really rubbing doors. There's Eskimos do it on streets. On icebergs. On icebergs. Well, 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 are we all enjoying our little selves? I haven't had an evening like this for years, I'm happy to say. Well, don't worry, love, it can only get worse. Uh, Len, don't dash off, will you? I want to work with you later, okay? That's right, love, yeah. you're right, love. You grab him while you can. He's ready for anything tonight. So I see. <laughs> See that, Ray? Even at my age, the two of them fighting over me to see who gets me. You no, know, he's dead right, you know. If I win, she has him. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? How many jokes there are about cocoa. Mm. And it really is a marvellous drink to go to bed on. <sighs> a bit of the champagne. Thank the Lord. We'll get there one day. And not champagne. We're not really champagne people. Mm. Cocoa in Crown Derby Cups. Sounds like us. Ernest. Mm. What do you really think your chances are of getting the job? I don't know. I've been thinking about it. This this fellow Baldwin is as unlike me as it's possible to get me. And I felt a felt a sort of rapport between us. I felt we hit it off in some strange way. Mm, I think you could be right. It's a mistake to think you can only be happy with your own kind. Sometimes the most unlikely combinations are the best. As the underwear salesman said to the actress. Ernest. So, he went up to the top of the garden, said Mum, where the Brussels was standing in rows. I told him to lop off a pound of the best as a boiling with dinner the nose. It was then that I saw he was staggering, Mum said. Backwards, forwards, he fell down on grass. He was clutching his breast, and his lips had turned blue. And I knew he was gasping his last. Oh, whatever did you do, said Aunt Martha, who'd called to express sympathies. What could I do, Mum said? Meat were near cooked. To open some manner fat peas. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew she had it in. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I'm glad it's out because it must have been hurting. It was right good that it deserves drinks all around with the show. You have no piker, I'm buying. <laughs> yeah, you, be, you are absolutely right, Bet. This has turned out to be a scintillating evening and Shirley MacLaine has paled into insignificance. Oh, we're here, are we? Flesh and blood. I mean, you can get hold of us. <laughs> oh, you could be right. A couple more of these and I'm anybody's. Fred? Whatever Ken's on, he wants two. <laughs> 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 Nothing, darling, I'm just purring. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Well, as far as I can make out, they're all the same. How did you manage to get landed with three, though? I mean, that's asking for trouble. Any fool can do it. You just have to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Doesn't mean to say because you pick wrong the first time, you're going to pick right the second or the third or the fourth, for that matter. No, we just go gaily on. This is it, the great love of my life. This time it's forever. And a month later, you're scratching each other's eyes out. It must be a kind of craving for company, and when you've got it, you don't want it. Ah, it's somewhere like that. You know, we think it's fellas we want. Do you know what my idea of paradise is? With feet in a bowl of warm water, a good whodunit, and a pound of chocolate marshmallows. Hey, shall I tell her what paradise is for you? Hey. Don't bother. It's the same as hers, only with peppermint cream. <laughs> Shan't tell you again. Not only the chance of a good job, it's a chance of holiday I haven't had since God knows when. You're going off to Torquay, singing for a month? Right. With another boy? He's an agent. All he's interested in is rotten ten percent. And I'm interested in my flaming business. And I have first call in her, so I say no. Well, I'm going. All right, then go. But don't expect a job when you get back. And you better take your bits and pieces with you, because they're going to be on the street when you get back. Mm. Go on, take a poke at me. Oh. Would you get a doctor, somebody? Sure, you know. What happened? Was there a fight? No, but when there is, we'll sell you tickets. Len, how is it? Len, love. Are you with us, mate? Oh. Hey, yeah. Uh, come on. Oh, look at the mess. It's blood all over the place. Well, I think we should send for a doctor. No, it's well, all sit right. down. Don't fuss. Can no, I? Just sit down. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, but uh, no, no quack, sir. Well, what about your head, love? I'll just get a plaster with No, it. get him a glass of brandy. Why, do you think that's up. wise? A glass of brandy right away. Come on, oh, love. Don't waste time. Come on, thank you very much. Oh, we'll be all right. get that down with you. What a thing to happen, though. Hey, uh, give us a lift to the gents. Now, do you think you should try and walk? Well, leave him be, it. will you? Can I? Can you make him? Right. Well, don't give me any of funny looks, madam. Ooh, talk about hard face. She can't even say she's sorry. Well, of course I'm sorry. You don't think I'm glad he's hurt himself? Hurt himself? You pushed him. You're responsible for it that. It was an accident. He slipped off stool. He never slipped. I saw you. Pushed him. I saw you. Hey, hey. Come on, Elsie. I mean, look at the size of her. How could it she have pushed Len over? Look, I saw her. He was off balance. He wasn't expecting it. She went at him like a flaming fury. You were sat halfway across the room. You couldn't see anything in this light. Now, so stop slinging your accusations. No, if there's any problem, it's between me and Len. Look, All right, look, look, listen. Let's just see if we can get a coffee until he's fit to go. <laughs> I think you should be on telly. <laughs> Do you really? No. <laughs> oh, don't take any notes of them, Mavis. I think you're very good. Very good indeed. Well, Rita laughs at me as well. Well, the funny your songs, aren't they? Yes, laugh the way you laugh. Yes, that's a compliment. <laughs> she laughs differently. Sneering. That's right. Rita. Tell you what, love, just to prove how good you are, give us another. Don't know anymore. Oh, I bet you do. You're just saying that. Well, 
Oh, I could just have another little drink to give me some more, don't you, Kerry? Right, I can't bet. Let's set up, then. Do you know this is turning into a right old shindy? <laughs> I only meant for us to have a quiet after-time drink. It's you I blame, Rally. Hey, sir, you don't know where Go to on, start. Get there, oh, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, then, presenting for the first time at very great expense the magical, mysterious, multi-talented, many-sided... Um, Magnificent. <laughs> Magical. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> mean, moody, and magnificent oh, babies. Yes. Go on, go on. Go on. Go on. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I'll have to think. <laughs> <laughs> we were oh. waiting. Oh. I've sunk. Now, <laughs> shush. Out, Sally, shut you with the Lancashire. He gave a party last night. Oh, no. the last night was there. Who well, well, thought you knew? Dog. She's gone to Gatsby with Len Fairclough. The guests She's never. The she has. So that's who his mysterious companion was. Oh, me, moody, magnificent. Well, I suppose and in the gloom of the Gatsby with half a dozen pints inside him, she could just about manage to look passable. He must be hard up. It could have been harder up. It could have took you. You know something, love. Your mouth's too big for your brain. Little Polly Perkins went and tumbled down the <laughs> Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Wonderful. Now, all right, stop fussing now, eh? Len, how, how's the cup for you? Well, it stopped bleeding, love, but uh, I think I might have only lost a couple of gallons. Stop joking, Matty. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I, I reckon that gas needs a couple of stitches at least. Stitches? What stitches? Oh, it's all right. I've got very good healing flesh. I don't need any embroidery. I'll go and organise a test. Yeah, good idea. Oh, you'd be right as rain after a good night's sleep, wouldn't you, Len? Yeah, will yeah. Oh, look, Len, I think Ray's right. It's a job for a doctor. Oh, it's all right. Stop fussing, eh? Never just sit here quiet until the taxi comes. Then we'll all go home, eh? But however far I travel... <laughs> I know I shan't stay. <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, oh, no, Lord, I'm to drink. I have vodka and tonic. Vodka and nothing. I heard the vodka and nothing. I mean nothing except perhaps a cup of black coffee. Oh, you refuse it to serve me in the landlady's absence. In Mrs. Walker's absence in Surrey, Jersey, Bet I in charge. Oh, I wish she drinks vodka and tonic. And if she were here, you would serve her with the vodka and tonic. No, we won't. We're not serving nobody. Now, look, you're here as Bet's guest oh, and the party's no. over. Come oh, on, oh, sunshine. Oh, 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 I wouldn't oh, make this is bigger than you are. Oh, <laughs> is that? Come on, love, get your coat. Let her sit down. She's not in a fit state. No, I'm only thinking of her. She has to go to work in the morning. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm stopping in bed in the morning. And I'll have enough of that cabin and a rotten rate bossing me about. Going to work in the factory. Well, the state you'll be in tomorrow, they'll not give you a job sweeping floors. I'll put kettle on. No, not for me, thanks, Bert. No, I'm going now. Thank you. It's been great fun. Yeah, Very great. Well. Uh, you won't be if you like. Yeah. All right, only if you promise to protect me from any dirty great thugs. <laughs> You'll be safer with dirty great thugs. <laughs> Listen, when you're sober, we'll have a talk about factory. If you're serious, I won't mind coming with you. I won't mind a change. A bit more in my pay packet. Oh, wouldn't you just like one more? Oh, one more No, not tonight, thank you. <laughs> it's, been, it's been lovely, but, you know, another time, right? Yeah, but... Oh. 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 What does she mean when I'm sober? I've never felt sober. Listen, <laughs> you're stopping here. Oh, I can't. And she wouldn't like it. Well, your auntie will like it even less when she sees the state you're in. So stop it now. Oh. Give me a phone number and I'll ring her up and make some of oh. you. Fred, she's stopping here. She's sleeping in Mrs. Walker's bed. She's stopping. We can't let her go home like this. And where's Miss Millas' bus? She's missed the last bus. Miss Millas' bus. 
Oh. oh, excuse me. All right, love. I need the powder on. We should never have let her get like this. She's a big girl. Let her make her own mistakes. Bet you said you were stopping tonight. I only said I'd tuck you up in bed. And I only said that. I was lonely here up Well, you won't be lonely now, will you? Because you'll have Mavis with you in a manner of speaking. Oh, bet. Sorry. Three's a crowd. Blast bloody Mavis. Frederico. No hanky-panky. Can you see me doing? Frankly, no. <laughs> oh, I do feel ill. I'll make him a nice cup of tea, plenty of sugar. Oh, just let me get to bed, eh? I'll be a lot better when you lot have buzzed off. Hey, what's up? I saw a taxi going, all lights on and doors were opened. Has there been an accident, Lee? Something now, love. He'll live. What's happened? Oh, well, for a blow-by-blow -blow account, ask your mate Rita. Hey? Oh, I'll see. Well, it was her fault. What were? Look, will you stop nattering? My head's splitting anyway. Look, love, you get him upstairs. Give us a shout when he's in bed and I'll bring him a hot drink up. There's some aspirin somewhere in that top left-hand Yeah, all right, I'll get him. I'll get him. Will somebody put me out of my misery and tell me what happened? Well, Len took me out to the hey, Gatsby for a job. How is he? Oh, well, would you believe it? She's found a conscience at last. Rita, you're a doctor or what? Rita, you'll tell me what happened. Len took me out for an enjoyable evening at the Gatsby. Madame here objected, so she thumped him, that's all. You liar. It were an accident. I never meant to hurt him. And anyway, that's You do admit that reason. you landed him one, though. All I admit is I lost my temper. But don't flatter yourself it was on your account. I've better things to worry about. Oh, for sure. I'll take these. Thanks, sir. How is he? He's not so good. Oh. Sorry. Look, instead of you two bawling at each other like a pair of fishwives, hadn't you better sort out who's going to take care of him? Hey, What are you talking about? Well, if Ray says he's not so good, he's not so good. So somebody's going to have to keep an eye on him. Yeah, well, nothing sure. I shall have to write to Eric and Doreen Griffiths and ask them what you did do without me. Well, don't you like the idea of me having a mysterious past? I love it. I just don't believe it. Very chirpy for half past eight in the morning. Ah, but this isn't just any morning, you know. This is the morning I rejoin the ranks of the employed. At least it had better be. It will, Ernest. Remember, positive thinking. Positive. What time did Mr. Baldwin say he'd let you know? Well, he didn't actually. He just said he'd give me a decision today. Oh, well, I'll leave it till this afternoon. If I don't hear anything, I'll pop across the road. You'll not think you're pushing it. I want him to think I'm pushing it. He seems to be the type that admires a bit of get up and go, so I'll get up and go. Good luck, then. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, continental hours already. You are? Licensed premises, opening at breakfast time. Oh, no, I'm not going into work. Leastways, I am going into the Rovers, but not to work. Let's just say a little unfinished business from last night. Oh? Did I miss some excitement last night? Well, one way or another, you could put it like that. you're doing? It's an ancient voodoo custom. It's called making tea. Oh, get back to bed and I'll bring that up. Look, haven't you got any work to go to? How are you feeling this morning? So-so. Well, how's the head? Still on me flipping shoulders. Oh, well, look, I'm sick of this messing about. Go on, get up to bed. I'll make some toast and a pot of tea and I'll bring it up to you. And after that, I'll phone the doctor. I said no. Did you hear what I said? Get back to bed. It's the blessed place for you in that condition. Go on. Flaming fellas. By gum, you're starting early. Fair of the dog. Well, you didn't have all that much to sup last night. How do you know? Unless you carried on boozing after we'd gone. Do you mind? I went straight to bed. Who's? Ha, funny ha. If you didn't trust me, but they wouldn't have left me with her, would you? It's very true, that. It's a shame. How is our secret soubrette today, any road? <laughs> By the time that I had a go to Lavi, I'd say very poorly. I'm not surprised. Still, it happens to all of us. Mind you, it doesn't happen to me as often as I'd like it to these days. What? Getting sloshed? No, waking up and finding myself in a strange bed. Oh, the lady in question. How are you, love? Oh, dear. Bad, is it, love? Well, it's not good. 
Listen, did I have an awful lot to drink last night? I mean, the last day I remember, we're asking for a vodka and tonic. But that were after them six rum and black currant. Oh, I never. Take no notice, love. She'd just been cruel. Listen, you didn't have a lot, not in quantity. It's just that you're not used to it. Oh. Not like some I could mention. Oh, I had to get myself in a state, didn't I? Um, did I do anything, um, you know? Anything what? Embarrassing. Oh, not while I was there. Oh. No. It was after me and the rest have gone that you tried to batter Fred's door down. Oh. Leave her be a bit. Of course you didn't love. Listen, I don't know why you're coming up footing around here first thing in the morning just to taunt her. I thought you'd come to help. Oh, it's all right. I don't need any help. Well, maybe just a cup of coffee and then I'll be Get off. Me one, you know, last night you weren't going in to work this morning. You were going to go and tell Rotten Rita what she could do with her rotten job. Well, that was last night. And you were going to go to the factory and see what they had in the way of work? I can't see myself working in a factory. I've been told what to do all the time. Well, aren't you told what to do all the time in cabin by bossy Rita? Yeah, but I'm not frightened of Rita. I, I'd be glad all the same if you wouldn't tell her about last night. Well, I am entitled to my private life. If it's any consolation to you, love, mm. your life isn't half as colourful as hers, from what I hear. You don't go around nightclubs belting fellas now, do you? There. That should do the trick. I'll just give you a prescription for something for your headache. Apart from that, I'm all right, am I? Oh, yes. It's simply a case of mild concussion, that's all. I'd take a couple of days off work if I were you. Uh, can you manage that? Yeah, can. Yeah, if I have to. Do I have to stop in bed? No, only well, if you want to. Just till the dizziness passes. Otherwise, you can sit down here quite comfortably. What about my blood pressure? Normal. Apart from bashing the head, you're perfectly fit, Mr. Fairclough. Fit than you've a right to expect. Yeah, well, I eat too many chips and I drink too much ale. Not enough fresh air and exercise. I do get a bit of that at work. Oh, well, that's something. Now, listen, if the headache isn't better in a couple of days, just let me know, will you? Yeah. Don't, don't get up. I'll see myself out. Yeah. Bye. Thank you very much. Ta da. Len? Oh, Len. Mm. Why, I'm sorry. I thought I'd pick on someone your own size next time. Well, I didn't mean that to happen. I didn't mean you to fall. Oh, it's all right. I just lost my balance and I trapped my head on the way down. It would have happened to anyone that you thumped. I, I didn't really mean to hit you. Oh, I don't know. I just got a bit... Red-headed. Yeah, landed out. Hey, what did he say? Is it serious? What have you do? He said I've got concussion and I'll probably die eh? at 93. I called him this morning, but Elsie had been in earlier and no, made no, him his no, breakfast. How did he aloof? Ropey. He was flipping bad tempered. <laughs> Elsie had sent for a doctor. Oh, it's best thing. Yeah. Fred, it's OK if I nip out later and see if Thalen Invalid wants out. Makes no odds if I said no. You've been here longer than me, haven't you? That's true. He'll do all right with Aldrin. He's got the right ideas, even if he's a bit of a rough diamond. Yeah, it's no easy thing starting up a new business in these hard times. He's got that place going like a bum, hasn't he? No flies on him, as they say. Excuse me. All right. No justices they can. And you there with all your studying and degrees, and there's him rough as old boots, and it's him that's coining it. Well, Ray, I've long since come to the conclusion that I'm no businessman. I'm not a salesman. What are you? No, I'll find out. I'll let you know. I know what I am, and that's thirsty. Come on, love, get your purse out, eh? Ah, Mr. Bishop. I was oh. told I might find you in. I'm not always in here, you know. Why not? Looks a nice little boozer to me. No, well, what I meant was... Well, I, I... Calm down. You don't have to prove to me you're a solid citizen. You did that yesterday. Oh, really? In what respect? Well, I think you're honest, reliable. In fact, just the sort of bloke I'm looking for. I've got the job. <laughs> you got the job. Now, what would you like? Don't worry, I won't hold it against you. Oh, half a bit, please. Right. Could I have uh, half a bit and a pint, please? Huh? Do. By the way, who was it told you I might be in here? Oh, uh, Mrs. Ogden. She saw me knocking at your door. She seemed interested. She would be. Yeah. And you, me, the factory, you name about it. She asked about it. That Sour Hill. You know, it might be an idea to have someone like you on the staff. Hmm? Can you think of a better way of keeping your finger on the pulse? Believe you me. Washington have had a few Mrs. Ogdens. Watergate would never have happened. I think you've got something there, Mr. Baldwin. Mike. Come and have that beer. Right. 
How much is that, Hello? Service Shepherds. How's he hired? Well, hello. And what can I do for you? What's up with it? Well, nothing. It's just that when I got home, I started thinking that, well, perhaps I should have had the green one instead. You had a green one on the rail. Yeah, behind you. You want to swap it for the green one? Well, I think so, yes, if that's all right. That's not been worn. Perhaps I'd better try this one on. It's the same as the black one. If the black one fit you, that will. Oh, but, I mean, I must get the effect. Mind you, with the black one, I could wear me pink blouse. I couldn't wear it with this. I mean, pink and green don't go together, do they? Of course, black is better for slimming. But, well, I think green would make a nice change. I've never had green. Well, madam, you can take that miserable look off your chops and replace it with a dirty big grin. Why? Well, first the bad news. You'll have to cook by yourself this lunchtime because I've got one or two things to do. <laughs> and the good news? I presume from your smirk there is some. Who gave you so much lip? You did. Oh, I shall have to smack your legs for you, I will. Do you know who that was on the phone? Your ex's wife. Mrs Thornton? Hmm. It would seem that uh, your Roy, or is it her Roy, or is it uh, Mrs Thornley's Roy? Anyway, wandering boy Roy has moved in with Sylvia. So Mrs T has got enough evidence for her divorce without citing you. So you have been dropped from the picture. I'm not a correspondent. No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I told you I shouldn't tell me, Mum and Dad. Well, just once it so happens oh, you were right. I jump over the moon. <laughs> Still. Now what's wrong? I'm going to look a right fool in front of my friends, aren't I? Oh. I mean, what am I going to tell them? They think I'm being branded as a scarlet woman. Oh, you'll think up some wildly dramatic story with yourself in the leading role, as you always do. In the meantime, I've got other problems to cope with. Oh, after this, I could take anything in my stride. Including a new boss. Why, where are you going? Oh, I'm not going anywhere, you crate egg. It seems that Sylvia and Roy are thinking of selling off and going somewhere more congenial. You know, loving a warm climate. They go all... Timbuktu for all I care. I don't care where they go. It's who comes that worries me. Well, it's love. I'm so pleased. Mind you, I never doubted. Not for a single second. Oh, I did. Oh, I do like Mr Baldwin. You've never met him. I don't need to. He's obviously a man of taste and discernment. Employing my husband with all his talents. He's also very shrewd, employing your husband and all his talents for 45 quid a week. Oh, don't say that as if it was nothing. Well, it's hardly this. a fortune, is it? Well, it's better than supplementary benefit. Mm. You did say it was only a start. The prospects are excellent in the long term. In the short term, it is the end of two months' purgatory. Shall we treat your goddaughter in Melbourne to something a, a little more lavish than a boot token? No. Charity begins at home, and if I'm going to treat anybody, it'll be my wife. I'm taking you out for a meal tonight. Ernest, we mustn't let it go to our heads. We, we really can't afford to be reckless. Minestrone, spaghetti bolognese, Italian trifle. Oh, Ernest, that's the trouble with you. You know all my weaknesses. <laughs> if I'd have known that you'd already got a nurse... Well, there's plenty of room for you two, love. Give us another chocolate, darling, will you? Hey, where'd you get them from? Cabin. Did you pay for them? Die, heck, fair cloth. What? Nothing. Only if you think that I'm going to spoon that into you, you've got another thing coming. Listen, I shall be going to the shops later on. Throw out especially one for your tea. For me tea? Mm. Welcome to the staff, lovey. Oh. As the doctor been, uh, what did he say? He said I'll be all right so long as I don't do out. Oh. Yeah, and if I don't obey his orders, hospital job. As bad as that? Yeah, but I'll be OK with you three looking after me, won't I, eh? Bangers and mash. Eh? Ginger here wants to know what I want for me tea. Bangers and mash followed by a custard tart. You'll find some uh, some money in the top drawer there. Right. A lovely drop of soup, this, darling. Thank you very much indeed. Elsie, love, you mind putting the telly on? There might be a bit of sport on. Eh? Telly. Oh. oh. <laughs> Len, is there anything else I could do for you? Well, not really, love, but on the way back, can you just slip a couple of brown ales in your handbag? Are you sure a doctor said you could soak? He said I could do anything, love. So long as I don't exert myself. Mm. Oh, thanks, Elsa.
families. Can't live with them, can't live without them, as Mike discovers when he has an important decision to make. Next on Granada Plus. That's it. That's right. Well, I'm uh, just popping up. Well, you know where it is. Oh, yeah, love. Blindfold. <laughs> you, Len! I'm on my way up. <coughs> you didn't tell me you had a gorilla for a brother. <coughs> Never asked. Give up. That'll be the day. Oh, Terry, do pack it in. You heard your sister, mate. <laughs> is that the squeal of defeat, I hear? It's the squeal of a broken arm. <laughs> Right, best out of three. Right, Andy, this enough, time. Enough's enough, Terry. It's time you were off. Oh, really? I've had no pudding. You're not getting any. It's time you were back at work. Look, if Fairclough can malinger, so can yours truly. Who says he's malingering? His doctor let it slip to Ray. Signed him off two days since. So until he comes back to work, me and Ray's on an official strike. Well, will you stage your strike somewhere else, oh, please? Oh, come on, Reen. I'm still hungry. Terry. Uh-oh. Should have said. See you later, then, Harry. Yeah, not if I see you first, you won't. Take a hint, that one. Well... Still, I'm glad you hit yourself. I was hoping you would. Well, what are you going to do today? Any thoughts? Depends. Any suggestions? Oh, yes. But I did promise I'd see an off-licence in Clarence Street. I can't cancel to you, love. No, you go. I'll be fine. I'll mind the shop, if you like. What do you? Just say the word. Leave that for a minute, eh? Well, they all do themselves. They can wait. So what happened to the big welcome? I'm sorry, love, it's just... What? Well. It's not exactly how I planned it. Your first leave here, it was going to be something special, something to be remembered. But instead, it's turned out exactly like the last one, with you rushing off before you've even landed, and me rushing around like a scalded cat, looking like God knows what. I wanted to get my head, and I wanted to buy a new dress. Fat chance I've got now. Look, we've still got tonight. I mean, what you say, you you put your glad rags on and we'll go off out somewhere. I'll book a table anywhere you fancy. I don't shut the shop till nine. Okay, then we'll eat here, just the two of us. If you can get rid of that brother of yours for an hour or two. You just watch me. <laughs> hey, uh, was that your own pastry or some of that uh, frozen stuff? My own, love. I'm a dab on with pastry. Short crust, long crust, you name it. You weren't complaining, were you? Oh, no, not so you dear. Mm. You know, I've not seen this side of him before. The martyred, dog-eared side. I'm not sure that I like it. Well, you put him up there. And I've been flaming, suffering for it ever since. Look, seriously, if you do want some time off, I'll come and sit in for it, if you like. Say, uh, maybe, um, a night sitting. Hmm? Thanks. But as you quite rightly said, it was me that put him there. So reaching for him, fetching for him, carrying for him is all part of my penance. And I couldn't possibly ask you to do that, now could I? <laughs> well, uh, I have done it before, you know. Which makes it my turn. <laughs> All right. I'll pop in and bring him some grapes later. I'll peel them for him if I'm not too pushed. Hey, is it right that you gave up all that work in Torquay just to look after him? That's right. Now, how is that for devotion to duty? I find that very touching. Back into bed. Go on. In. I am. Rest, the doctor said. 
Out. I was just trying to straighten me back. I think I must have twisted my uh, neck uh, when I went uh, on the floor uh, after uh, you'd hit me. Forbidden subject, remember? Hey, you couldn't give my neck a bit of a massage, could you, love? Turn over. Uh. Oh. Hey, you know, you know what I'd do it, darling? What? A pint of any walker's bitter. No. It would, you know. No. It gets to the parts that the other beers cannot reach. Rest, the doctor said, and rest you're going to have if it kills me. Ah, uh, all right. All right, doesn't matter. I'll do without. It's all right. Come on, why don't you come right out and say it? What? You want me to go for a pint for you? Well... One half, that's your lot. Make it a pint. Downstairs, love, on the mantelpiece, you'll find a pewter tankard. What about it? Get it to fill it up, will you, darling? I mean, if I'm only going to have one, I might as well have it in style. Anything else? A yes, love. What? Don't slam the door on the way out. <laughs> yeah, there's foot into that. Hello, Mr. Tapper. Oh, oh, oh so right. that's it, eh? And well, what's all the fuss about? A few shelves of expensive booze. If you've any complaints, Mr. Tatlock, see the manager. Okay, love. Right. Hello, Mr. Anything you fancy? Wine. I don't think it brings that lot round here. Well, you know what them ads say about wine. A meal without wine is like a day without sunshine. Too much stouts if you've got them. Yeah, you know what they say about stout too, don't you? A day we out stout is a day we out gout. You're always like that. Oh, about 99% of the time. How much do I owe you? Uh, it's on the house. First off licence, customer gets it free. Orders are the owner and you're her. Hey, oh, what about me? Up. I want to hear first. We know what they say. You can't make his mind up. Don't get free booze. There you are, lovely. Thank you very much. I still vote on a down tools myself. Look, if we go on strike, the job don't get done. And if the job don't get done, we don't get paid, right? So what do we do then? Let him get away with do it? Do we hackers like? There's got to be another way. Got it. Bromide in his tea. That'll put his nose out of joint. Oh, do us a favour, will you? Any road is probably immune since he was in Navy. I think they used to give it us in the neck. What? Bromide. Will you shut up about flaming bromide? I thought you said you wanted ideas. Ideas, yes. Idiotic suggestions, no. Yeah, well, I still think the direct approach is always best, Willie. Go round, have it out with him. They are. The direct approach. Go round, hit him with half house for it. Oh, sorry. There's no sport in that, though, is there, Al? Well, what do you want? Sport or to get him back to work? Both. Oh. You know, I quite fancy marketry myself. I think I'd be good at that. What is marketry? Well, it's sort of, um, cutting things out. Uh, hey, you're never running all these classes at the centre, are you? Uh, some of them, maybe, if there is enough interest. Oh, I can't even pronounce half of them. Entomology. Entomology. I don't think that's quite your line somehow, Betty. It's a study of insects. Oh, i tell you what, Ken. You fix up an evening class to explain all about the evening classes and we'll take it from there. Yeah, I've got a feeling it's got to be something. How's the invalid? How come when anybody's laid up, it's never them that's doing all work looking after them that gets asked after? Back to live love. Well, here's another. He wants that filling. He must be feeling better. Well, a few more days of skivvying for him and I'll send up in bed in hospital. <laughs> hey! I hope you're getting all them papers out on time. Yes, sweetie. And renewing all library books. Yes, sweetie. And banking takings like I've showed you at the end of the day. All done, mate. Well, there must be something you're forgetting. Yes, there is, actually. I've forgotten what it's like hearing your voice yammering on at me all day and every day. It might surprise you to know that I'm managing quite well in your absence, so if you're coming back to expecting to find the place crumbling, you're in for a disappointment. Maybe. There is something you've forgot. Your handbag. I am looking, gentlemen, at the answer to our problem. Come with me a sec. How do? I thought you two were working on site. Oh, we're on strike. Well, we're thinking about it. You what? It's rather pleasant, actually. You should try it. In case you forgot, Langton, when you were laid up with your gammy arm, Perclough was out grafting. The least you can do is return the favour. You reckon? I do. And take blue eyes here with you. No, hang on a minute. You've oh, got it's all right, Jenny. It's all right. That's a very interesting comparison, that, Rita. Very interesting. Mm. The only difference is that my injury was genuine. Meaning what? Meaning that Len Perclough is swinging the lead, my love. He's conning us. The only thing wrong with him is an hefty dose of idleness. He's as fit as you are. Fitter. Says who? 
Only his doctor. He told me that Len Fairclough's been fit to work for two days. I don't believe you. Yeah, well, suit yourself. Only next time you're soothing his fevered brow, just ask him, will you? Look into his crafty eyes and ask him. And if you swallow what he says, you'll be an even bigger mug than you are now. took you so long? Do you know, I'm going slow in my old age. Yeah. Better late than never, though, I suppose. Oh. That won't even touch the sides, that darling. It'll go down like liquid velvet. Reckon I train. You are? Checking on the local opposition. I reckon she'll have been to half the off-licenses between here and Stockport before she's finished. And left you all on your own, Neil? I've been doing some reconnoitring of my own. Her opposition's near her home, if you ask me. You reckon? I do. I have a set of maids on board ship who give their eye teeth to be stood where I am now. So where are they? They couldn't get ashore, could they? It's weeks sometimes, you know, before we see a woman. Months, even. Deprivation like that is unhealthy. I can imagine. It gets so you can't think of anything else. You get obsessed, haunted. Keep talking. When you're lying in your bunk at night, feeling the swell of the sea underneath you, your mind starts wandering. And it's always the same picture, you see. It's always the picture of a, a blonde in a bikini. Do you know it's music to my ears, is this? Because sometimes she's not in a bikini. Sometimes she's completely... Your kettle's boiling. We'll finish this another time. You can count on it. Do you know, there's something about sailors. Hands off, you. Six years hard labour, Irene, is put into that fella. Well, she'd better look sharpish, love, cos you know what happens in the seventh? They start scratching, especially sailors. You could have given me flipping pneumonia, you could have done. Now there's an idea. Oh, get out, there was no harm done. Oh, not to you, maybe. You were lying up here in clover while some folk were working their fingers at bone for you. Get out, you were enjoying it. I what? You were having a ball. Enjoyed it? Standing over your rotten stove, cooking greasy food and washing your smelly socks while you were up here laughing your head off all the time. It was a joke, that's all. A joke? Oh, I didn't realise that. A flipping joke, yes. A joke, like your head were a joke and your dizzy spells and your bad back which I had to rub. Do you know I could swing for you? That was ill, that was all. Do you know what you are, Fairclough? Oh. You're a louse. Now special, just an ordinary commoner garden louse. And one day somebody's going to step on you and when they do, I'll have a laugh. Me. Until then, keep out of my road, because this is the last time you make a mug of me. Not the first, but by God, it's going to be the last time. You, gentlemen! That's all I need. Hey, Elsie had nothing to do with it, you know. Well, I hope not, for her sake. I brought you some grapes. Oh, am I interrupting something? I should save your grapes and your sympathy. Eh? Because you and I have been made mugs off by our mutual friend here. There's nought wrong with him, and there hasn't been for several days. It's a well-known fact down at Rover. The only ones that don't know are you and me. Is this true? No, he's asking him. Can't well, open his mouth without lies coming out. I might have guessed it. Aye, <laughs> but you didn't, did you? You've had her and I running round in flaming circles. Had me running round in flaming circles. Well, you rotten dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, love. I know it's not funny, but when you think... Do you realise you lost her a job in talking all through you? Do you? I'd forgotten that. You never know, I might have saved you from a fate worse than death. I mean, it's a bit wild down there in Torquay, you know. I suppose you think that's funny. <laughs> well, let's see how funny you think that is. <gasps> hey, 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 watch it! Now, was that flipping necessary? What's the matter? Lost your sense of humour all of a sudden? That's all my clothes down there in the street. That's right. So you'd better go down and fetch them. And while you're down there, fetch somebody else up to wash for you, coop for you and clean for you. Because as of now, Oh, I've had it. Can't take a joke, can she? What time are you due back then? Midnight. We sail at five. Didn't you, uh, 
Didn't you fancy stopping in the army, Terry? I didn't fancy Northern Ireland, did I? That's where I was headed if I'd stayed in. Joint army to see a bit at world, not get me head blown off round corner. As well as Navy, or Merchant Navy. Oh yeah, well, Reen would love that. Would she mind? She'd be delighted, wouldn't she? Oh, she's never objected to me being... Has she ever said that in so many words? Well, some things don't need saying. Reen and me, we have an understanding. Mm, that's what you have, is it? It's my job, Terry. I mean, she understands that, so we have this... Civilised arrangement. I live my life, she lives hers, except when I'm home. Yeah. Will it be the same as that after you're married? That's a long way off. Like how long? Well, no, Eddie. Besides, I reckon that's our business, don't you? Maybe. Except when you get a leave cancelled or forget to write to send one of your famous one-line postcards, then it's my business and all, cos I'm the one who's here with her. Like last Christmas when you decided to stop over in Hong Kong instead of coming to see her. Three days, I didn't get a flipping word out of her, and that was Christmas and all. But she never mentioned it to me. Oh, me? Cos I'm only a brother, aren't I? And you aren't here to mention it to. Well, you were lucky I didn't smash that tankard yeah. on his head. Rita. Well... Now, with this Duncan, before or after you lobbed his wife front through window? <laughs> before. What? But the best is yet to come. Here we are. Remainder at the housekeeping. Hey. What are you having, girls? The usual? Doubles. But of course. Ooh. You don't approve, do you? Oh, did I say so? You think I'm being childish, petulant and vindictive in that order, right? Possibly. I suppose you'd have given him one of your doleful looks and done out. I wouldn't have got myself in that situation in the first place. But of course. But uh, if I had... Yeah. I'd have done exactly what you did. Right. What? <laughs> do you know, for that, I'd a good mind to say you can come in late tomorrow and I'll do papers. Oh, can I? No, but it would touch and go for a minute there. <laughs> Girls, to Len Furkler. Um. God bless his little cotton wife fronts. <laughs> Who we'll let you in? Door was open. He didn't have bothered. I'd have been coming back to work tomorrow anyway. Is that a fact? Yeah, you don't think I'd let you two work on your Todd like that, do you? Crossed our minds, aye. It also crossed our minds, like about every ten minutes, to come round here and stick one on you. Is that right, Raymond? Yes, and if you ever pull a stunt like this again, I will do. And that's a promise. Come on, Terry. <laughs> 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 they were good times, great times. Oh, yes, the best. Another world. Hey, what happened to that Italian chap? You know, we were all went to the races with him one day. <laughs> he got married, that's what happened to him. Back to the Navy for a two-up, two-down and a bunch of kids. I've, uh, I've always been straight with you, haven't I, really? I've always been on the level. What sort of a question is that? I wouldn't want to see you hurt, you know. <laughs> Unless you think I'm going to get hurt. Well, people can hurt each other without knowing, without trying sometimes. What do you do with yourself when I'm gone? <laughs> Go to sleep, probably. <laughs> I'm all in. Uh, I mean, tomorrow, the day after, when I'm at sea. What do you do with your time? I mean, do you, do you have a guard at all with other fellas? I thought we'd agreed not to ask any questions. Or maybe it's time we did. So, what brought all this on? Oh, nothing. Harry, I can read you like a book. Uh, it was something your brother said. Terry? He asked me when we were getting married. So what did you say? I didn't say anything, because I didn't know the answer. Well, there's no hurry. I, don't, I always said I'd wait until you were ready. I always said that. Nothing's changed. Well, that's not what you were saying this morning. I mean, you were saying how much you changed. Not about us, I haven't. Why did you get this place, Rini? I mean, was it, was it just for yourself? Or was it something for us? For when I come ashore and settle down? You settle down? Because if that is the reason... It isn't. Yeah, I mean, can, can you honestly picture it? I mean, me serving behind that counter. You don't have to serve behind the counter. You can do anything. Well, like what? I mean, pensioned off third officers are the stuff dole cues are made of, love. Besides, the seize me life, I'd, I'd be like a fish out of water in Civvy Street. You know what I said when Terry asked when we were getting married? Exactly what you said. There's no hurry. And then I got to thinking that 
But if we really wanted to get married, we'd have done it by now. I can't see it working, really, can you? I can't see us getting married with me out of the Navy, and I can't see us getting married with me in it. I mean, I, either way, you'd be the loser, wouldn't you? I mean, me away for ten months every year, and you resenting it. I mean, you would, you know you would. It, it won't work, love. I, mean, I thought it would once, but... Well, that was a long time ago. In that other world. So, that's it, is it? The finish? Is that what you're saying, Harry? Well, I mean, not, not if you don't want. I mean, we still get along, all right? I have lots of laughs when I'm home, but... But if someone else comes along in the meantime, don't wait around. Not on my account. Or you might be in for a long wait. It's been six years already. That's terrible. Look, I've got to go. You'll be all right. Chin up. It's not worth it. Nothing is. Life's too short. Next on Granada Plus, contestants pit their wits, minds and bodies against each other in another gruelling round of The Krypton Factor. Two each. 
Aye, that'll do if we're going on with. How much, love? Well, it depends what you're paying for. Just the two or all four. I might as well pay for the lot, then. All right, then. Give us that pound note. I'll see if I can find you any change. Thank you very much, Mr. Fairclough. All right, you get to grub later on, dinner time, eh? Hey, just watch him, Terry. Or he'll be on winning side. I know. Boy, the heck, you don't look very far, do you? Oh, stop grumbling. <laughs> Mrs. Sharples is waiting. Hey, don't mind me. I'm just fascinated watching folks buy a nail first ticket morning. Ah, oh, just step forward, Mrs. Sharples. Yeah, there's plenty of them around in the wrong direction, and that's one of them. Oh, come on, Mrs. Sharples, this country's behind the times as it is. Are we? And this is the one way of bringing it up to date by booting all hours God sent. Mm, it's good enough for a lot of countries, Mrs. Sharples. So it must be good enough for us. Listen, time was when we was leading land, and the world was a better place, and by heck, so was this country. Ah, get off your soapbox, Mrs. Sharples. I've been in countries all over the world where they sell booze 24 hours a day. I never saw any more drunkenness there than I do here. No, you were too pie eyed to notice, that's why. <laughs> well, she's got a point there, you could be right, you know. <laughs> now, what can I get you, Mrs. Sharples? A couple of bottles of milk stout? No, you can't. You stay with your air falls out if you take too much of that, you know. Good morning. Good morning. Go on, you can serve her, she's forever pushed. Are you sure, Mrs. Sharples? Oh, go on before I change my mind. Has it come in yet? My marijuana. What? Me marry Ioana. You know, that old Chinese sailor man usually brings it in. What's she on about? She's kidding you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to give up your turn, Mrs. Sharples, you want to hear something scandalous, don't you? <laughs> Tell him me usual, please, love. I'm sorry it's not worth more worthwhile and more scandalous than that. Madness, <clears throat> love. I'm uh, sorry to hear about your sidekick leaving home. I see the house is up for sale. Yeah, no, that means now. I'm never surprised at anything she does. You'll be lonely, though. Oh, there's that about it. She was somebody to talk to. So, if you're ever coming into the Rovers and like to buy me a drink, there'll always be a seat for you in snug. Oh, Mrs. Sharples, I'm afraid I'm far too young to sit in there. Mm. Don't worry, love. Nobody will notice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you ought to pay to see us. We're the best double act since Revlon and West. My I'm God, that, that put it, some years on me. Ta-da! 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 Morning, Hey, do you get danger money for working in this place? Get off, you cheeky devil. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me, is Mr... Uh, what's his name? Baldwin. Is Mr Baldwin here yet? No, he won't be long. Oh, I hope not. I've got an air appointment. Well, you'll just have to work out which is more important, won't you? Your hair or your job? Oh, I know which is more important, love. I mean, getting a job won't get me a fella, will it? Oh, I don't know, though. <laughs> he won't be long. <laughs> Oh, stay where you are. It's a bit of fun. And not else to do. Oh, do come in, both of you, and sit down. Miss Sherry. <clears throat> oh, well, it's a bit early in the day for me, Mrs. Walker. Not for me, it isn't. <laughs> Good. Uh, can't attempt you, Elizabeth. Oh, well, go on, then. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, then, cheers. 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 Now, as you know, every now and then, the Prime Minister has to address the country on the state of the nation. Mm. And in just the same way, I now have to address you on the state of the Rover's return. Now, as you know, there has been a severe economic crisis. It's about our wages, Mrs. Walker. How very astute of you, dear. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. There's been a lot about it in papers. <laughs> yes, <that's not laughs> yeah. Yeah. yes. Well, the country really is in dire straits. And this terrible state of affairs, it doesn't just affect your British Leylands and your Rolls Royces. Oh, no. It affects the Rover's returns, too. Now, you see, on the one hand, we have Roy Hattersley watching prices. On the other hand, we have Jack Jones giving everybody a pay rise, whether the employer can pay it or not. And in between, we have the man in the street mm. who thinks that anybody who is running a pub is worth a fortune. <laughs> Which, of course, is far from the truth. Yeah. Uh, what is the pay rise, Mrs. Walker? Four quid a week, is it? Ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't misunderstand me. I could afford to pay the four pounds a week yeah. if there was just one of you. But, you see, we have Michael Foote telling everybody to employ as many people as possible. Oh. Sometimes, I must tell you, I feel like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, 
Uh, to get down to business, I want to keep the two of you. Mm. But if I do, it does mean that I must cut your salary by two pounds a week as from next Monday. A cut? Nothing else for it, dear. Unless we take a leaf out of the Book of Solomon. Oh, what's he got to do with it? Pardon, dear. Solomon? You mean them with pot stall on market? Oh, no, no, dear, no. King Solomon of biblical fame. Oh. Well, I know this has got to sink mm. in. I know you have a great deal to think about. So, shall we get back to work? And don't hesitate to come and have a word with me. Remember Solomon in all his wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Why are we uh, ladies, waiting? Ladies, 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 I'm sorry you're being uh, kept waiting like this. It's most unlike Mr. Baldwin. I can only think of something quite unavoidable has held him up. Like sorry. not being able to get out of bed. <laughs> no, I, I meant something important. All depends who he's in bed with. <laughs> yeah, well, if I can just prevail on you to wait just a little longer, I'll do my best to get in touch with him. And do right? we get paid for this waiting time? Paid? Yeah, you know. Money. Well, I thought you were all from the job centre. There's nobody here should be working, is there? Oh, we could be doing something on the side. <laughs> We're not allowed to when you're on the dole. I've heard about fellows like you. I never thought I'd meet one, though. Oh, that could be Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> uh, Bishop. Ah, hello, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, about a dozen of them. Well, they've been waiting since... Oh, I see, yeah, that, that is awkward, isn't it? Yeah, I quite see that. Um, me? Well, I've never done this kind of interviewing before. Right. OK, fine. Yep. See you this afternoon, then. Right. OK, goodbye. Um, thank you, thank you. Ladies, uh, Mr. Baldwin's asked me to apologise. He won't be able to make it this morning. Oh, but, no. but he has asked me to stand in for him. No. So if I can just have the first lady, please, we'll make a start. Do you think you'll be able to manage us all on your own? <clears throat> Come in. Rack my brains. I can't think of that. Me neither. All I can remember is your Brenner played him in picture, mm. and I'm not even sure about that. How about young Gail? Not five minutes since she left school. Well, it's worth trying. Come on. Now, don't answer if you think it might incriminate you, love, but what do you know about Bible? Bible? Nothing. I went to a progressive school. We didn't have religious instruction. By gum, that sums the world up about just. You know about the Bible, don't you, Mrs. Sharples? Oh, so. If it were Harold Robbins, I wouldn't need to ask. I could quote chunks from carpetbaggers. <laughs> I bet you could. <laughs> what do you want to know, any road? Well, it's like this. Shall we tell them? Yeah, I may as well. Annie Oakley and there has been taking a few pot shots at us. She wants us to take a drop in pain. Mm. Now, according to her, she don't want to sack one of us, which would be the easy way out. But she says we must think on about this Solomon fella and his wisdom. Oh, I know about him. Who's it to be, then? Go on, let's see what she's learnt at that progressive school of hers. Well, there were these two women, and they were arguing over this baby, because they both said it belonged to her. So they went to Solomon to ask him, because he was supposed to be very wise. This sounds right. Mm -hmm. Any road, he said, cut the baby in two and have half each. Oh, I remember now. It's a lot more bloodthirsty Ooh. than our old Robin. Ah. Do you want me to tell you, or don't you? Sorry, Joe. Then Solomon said that one of the women said, OK, and the other said, no, don't do that, give the baby to her. And Solomon said, no, I'll give it to you, because you're obviously the real mother. Mm. That's right, isn't it, Mrs. Sharples? Well, I wouldn't have said the language was exactly biblical, but it's near enough. Mm. What does it mean, though? I think I'm beginning to see, and I feel sick. <laughs> of course you can see. You can't both have good jobs, but you can have two rotten ones. Unless one of you thinks enough about the other to walk out and leave her to it. You mean, um, she thinks that I'll give my job up so that you'll get your rise? Oh, what's even funnier is she thinks I might do the same for you. <laughs> hey, if you're looking for your Stanley, oh, darling, he's not in here. No, so I see. I just thought he might have popped in on his way home from work. From work? Work. Yeah, that's what I thought you said, but when you applied to your Stanley, it doesn't seem to fit. 
Uh, can I have a, a pie and a light ale to take out, please? Oh, yeah, he's going to be hungry when he does get home. Do you understand? Only one pie. Hey, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, what am I thinking of? Uh, make it two pies, two, please, right. and two light ales. Let him starve. He's not worth bothering about. Get round to Inkerman Street. Get yourself a bit of spare. <laughs> That's an idea. Uh, can I have some two penny pieces in my change? Hey, talking about Inkerman Street. There's a young fella there been left with three kids. She just upped, walked out. 27, Hilda. Uh, Not 19. Now, to do with yours, Dan. That's what you want to do, Hilda. Leave him. Yeah, give it a bash, Hilda. Everybody else is these days. Knowing your stand, I bet he won't notice for a week. <laughs> oh, I don't suppose he would, would he? <laughs> Thank you. You know, I hate to say it, but I think she's coming to her senses. Uh, well, always another one with her husband on the rampage. Pardon? Tell her about that, that chorus line over no, there. Take no notice, Mrs. Bishop. Your husband's only doing a bit of interviewing, that's all. Yeah, you want to see what he's interviewing, though? Close the door, would you please? Oh, that's dangerous. Oh, it's you. Now, come in and take a seat. Name? Mary Stanton. Mrs. Right. Divorced. Oh, that gets rid of three questions in one, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought it might. Uh, past experience? Oh. In the garment trade. You're fast. Well, I've had rather a lot, so I thought I'd write the jobs down. Thanks. Hey, you have, haven't you? Why exactly... Well, I could say it was to broaden my experience. Or to better myself. Or because I had to move a lot because of my husband. But it's none of them. Or I did have to move a lot because of my husband. But not with him. Away from him. <laughs> well, that's my trouble, you see, fellas. Weren't enough to sew a straight seam or put a button on so it didn't come off first time you fastened it. You had to give other services and all. You know what I mean. Well, that's the penalty of being attractive. Because you think I'm attractive, don't you? Oh, say so if you don't. No skin off my I do, nose. I do, I do. I think you're very attractive. Well, let me tell you something. For every good-looking, working-class girl as marries a millionaire, there's a thousand of us fighting off no goods in grotty little factories. And if you say no, you're out. This isn't going to be another one, is it? No. Experience wide. How's that? Just about sums it up. Oh, oh, hello. Uh, I wonder if you could help me. Um, I I'm ringing Weatherfield 4261. Only, when it makes the noise where you put your money in, I put the money in like it says, but it goes on making the noise. I've done it three times so far. Well, it's hardly a case of being reconnected, is it? I haven't been connected at all yet. No, you see, I I'm trying to ring the hospital, Weatherfield General, to make inquiries about my husband. Oh, would you? Oh, I'd be very grateful. And I have put three tuppences in already, honest. Oh, thank you. Oh, hello. Uh, could, could, could I have the part where they bring in the uh, accident cases and such like? Oh, you can. Oh, well, it's about a Mr Stanley Ogden. Yes, I was wondering if he'd been brought in. Oh, well, well, any time since yesterday dinner. Oh, he hasn't. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That it, then? Yeah, I think so. We'll let you know. It's my personality that lets me down, isn't it? Uh, I wouldn't say it lets you down, exactly. It uh, doesn't help. No, never did. I had a boyfriend once who said I was too overpowering. For him, I got divorced over. And when the divorce came through, he opted. it. Must have been too overpowering for him and all. Still, I think I'm all right with you. In what way? Oh, don't worry, your wife's safe. No, I meant as far as the job's concerned. Because I think you'd like to turn me down because of me overpowering personality. But I don't think you will. Because there's only one thing that worries you. And that's whether or not I can do the job all right. I'm right, aren't I? We'll let you know. Yeah. Would you ask the next girl to come in, please? See you. Bye.
What else are you doing here? What are the rest of them doing here? You mean you're here after a job? Oh, not just me. You may not realise it, but you are looking at two of us. Me and Betty Turpin. We're both after jobs. Really? Really. Only I jumped the gun because I said I was a friend of yours. Which I am. I hope. Rena Bradshaw may have got her licence, but she has a very poor idea of stocks. She carries a very poor selection. Yeah, well, a bottle there is cheaper than yours. Beg your pardon, Mr. Tetler. I said a bottle of ale is cheaper than yours. Price isn't the only criterion, you know, Mr. Tetlock. There are others. Like what? Like the quality of the service, for instance. The quality of what service? The quality of the service you get here. And what quality of service do I get? Well, if you don't know, Mr. Tetlock, I am certainly not going to tell you. Hey, do you know about the quality of service we're getting here? Now, Albert. Never mind the now, Albert. Do you or don't you? You know, sometimes I wonder why it took us so damn long to win the First World War. Oh, oh look at her. She's better like that. She can't get any worse. Um, Mrs. Walker. Um, what is it, Elizabeth? Could I have a word with you? Well, it's just to say that, um, well, you don't need to cut our wages. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My little Song of Solomon didn't fall on stony ground then. Oh, no, we took it very much to heart, Mrs. Walker. Good. Well, as you know, I don't want to lose either of you, but which is it going to be? Oh, well, um, actually, um, well, uh, we went a little bit farther, you know, than this, this Solomon fella. We're both going. You're both going? Yeah, we're in line for jobs across road at factory, and the bishop's got our names mm. down. I see. We'd be available for work at nights, of course, if you wanted us. Well, I must say, this is quite unexpected. Yes, so is what you've said. Come home, Stan. Oh, well, let's just see if I've got the name and address down, right? Uh, Theresa Meakin, right, 43 Atley House, Victoria Precinct. That's right. Fine. It's my mother's flat. Yeah, I see. I look after her, you see. There's only a pension coming in mm. and my own employment. Well, we'll let you know. Uh, Mr Baldwin will have to make the final decision, of course. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Oh, would you ask the next lady to come in, please? Oh, I think I was the last. Ah. Yes? There's nobody else there. Well, goodbye then. Bye bye. Thanks, Come on. Oh, hello, Mrs. Walker. I hope you don't mind me bearding you and your dinner. Of course not. Come in, come in. What is it, a social call? Not entirely, no. May I sit down? Yes, of course. I'm sorry we're so cheerless. Now this is what I've got to say. Hello. I've uh, had some rather disquieting news today. Now, I think we've known one another long enough to be frank, haven't we? I'm sure we have. Well, then I'll get straight to the point. I understand that you have offered Bet Lynch and Mrs. Turpin jobs here. Ah, uh, uh, not quite, Mrs. Walker. No, they are up for consideration. Well, that's different, isn't it? Of course, yeah. they were far more positive. But then they would be, wouldn't they? <laughs> that makes it much easier. Sorry, Mrs. Walker. I don't want you to employ them. At least, not both of them. Now, I don't want to go into the question of professional ethics or poaching staff or anything like that. I'd much rather that we treated it on the basis of friendship. Yes, and I, I don't think the question of poaching comes into it, Mrs. Walker. I didn't approach them. They came to me. Be that as it may, I'd prefer it that you only employed one of them. And I would like to ask it as a favour between friends. I'm sorry, I can't do that, Mrs. Walker. I told Bet Lynch I'd make a decision whether or not to recommend them both to Mr. Baldwin, and that's what'll happen. In spite of the fact that I'm asking you as a personal favour? I wish you wouldn't see it like that, Mrs. Walker. I'm sorry, Mr. Bishop, but there's no other way I can possibly see it. 
And don't imagine for one moment that the matter is closed. Bishop. Oh, hello, love. Oh, fine, fine. Except that war's just been declared again. We've more drama next here on Granada Plus. Plus, an ugly confrontation for good measure when Anton threatens to tell Barbara where Corinne is staying, in families. If Mr. Ogden didn't come and clean our windows today, Corporation would be knocking us down thinking we're derelict property. Look, I've told her, I'll tell him. Yeah, but will he come? Why should I know? You are his wife, Mrs. Ogden. You should know all about his activities and movements. That's a wife's job. Stops him getting into trouble like men do. Because they're not like us, are they? They never grow up for one thing. that interested if you ask me. I doubt she'll even pass the message on. Well, if she doesn't pass the message on, we'll just have to get a new window cleaner, won't we? Twenty coffee nails, please, love. Are there any more window cleaners round here? Oh, no, there aren't. I checked when I came here. When I'd seen Stanley operate, but there's not a chamois to be hired anywhere. In that case, we are in Stanley's power. I'd much rather be in Roger Moore's. <laughs> Pack it a mint. Of course, I'll see her. Uh, you could do your own windows. Oh, don't worry, kid. Ah, but you'll be doing them, not me. <laughs> not likely. I haven't to do any hard physical work on account of this terrible illness I had when I was a baby. What illness? Well, I don't exactly know, but I was a very weak child. My mother had to keep me in a warm oven for the first six months. <laughs> Go on, get off with you. Hello. After what you laughingly call work, are you, love? Yes, love, but we'll be finished by the time you've emptied the slops. ta Ah, uh, common as muck. I don't know why we talk to her. No, ten with spats on cock. Do you know? I must have sold 200 of these this morning, all to women. I know, we're picking up old fellas' bad habits. Sucking, smoking, gambling, swinging lead. And I mean, we've been toying with sex ever since Jane Russell opened our eyes in the outlaw. You speak for yourself. Mm. Oh, but honestly, Bert, I don't know how you've put up with Annie all this time. I mean, five minutes of her in here, and my nerves are twanging like your knicker elastic. Mm. Now, you know I were briefed. Of course you do. But honestly, though, she was in here. Well, yesterday, I think it was, ostensibly to buy a package of cream crackers, but really, to cast a jaundice eye over my stock, I'll swing for it. Well, actually, Rini, my employment with Annie Walker's on its last legs. Well, you do surprise mm. me. Me and Betty Turpin both. Well, have I got something else lined up? Across at the warehouse. You mean you've got jobs there? Well, a nod's as good as a wink, isn't it? Especially when it's from Ernie Bishop. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Baldwin. Machinists don't grow on trees. Well, they don't round here, anyway. No, I've interviewed, what, 25 women and girls, and of them, three, at the very most, have had the necessary experience. Well, in my book, anyway. Yeah, sure, I'll go on trying. There's no lack of applicants. It's, it's a matter of getting the right material. I mean, we want people who can tell the difference between a, a buttoning machine and a lawnmower, don't we? <clears throat> I can feel her looking at me. I can't let her look. She's never had a civil work to me since yesterday. Nor me. Well, I can't work in an atmosphere like this. Well, it won't be for much longer, Betty. As soon as Ernie gives us a thumbs up, we'll slap our notice in official like. But are you sure he's going to give us a thumbs up? Of course, I'm sure. <sighs> Wish I was. <clears throat> I wonder if I could prevail on one of the two you ladies to bring me some light ales up from the cellar. Prevail on us? 
One minute she's cutting our wages, next minute she's prevailing mm. on us. I'll be glad when we're working for somebody who's not got more faces than an onion's got skins. I'll get them, Mrs. Walker. <coughs> Are we running short of drip, Mess? Uh, well, we haven't got many left. Oh. Well, remind me to order some, will you, dear? Yes. Oh, how silly of me you won't be here to remind me, will you? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Elizabeth. Yes. Are you quite sure that you'll be happy across there? In what, after all, is, well, a sort of factory? At your time of life? Well, I've, I've no choice, have I? You see, Bet is a different cup of tea. I mean, she's young enough to make the change and she has had some experience. Um, are you trying to say something, Mrs Walker? Well, it's just, dear, that if Bet goes, I've solved my economic problem, haven't I? No need for you to go, dear. One crate of light tails. Oh, thank you. Put some on the shelf, will you? Hi. <clears throat> well, she's not been going at you, has she, behind my back? No. Of course not. How about? Yeah? Well, I mean, he's, uh, he's not likely to be poised on a cliff top somewhere, shredding a rose and muttering, she loves me, she loves me not. I doubt it, no. Yeah, well, don't say I didn't try. I'll, uh, I'll send an officer in to take his name and that, and uh, I'll tell the lads to keep their eyes open. But that's about as much as we can do, I'm afraid. I mean, we, we can't alert Interpol over a missing 54-year-old self-employed window cleaner. I mean, they're looking for bank robbers and international terrorists. Not with all that much success, either. Something uh, does spring to mind, Mrs... Uh... Ogden, Mrs Ogden. Cherchez la femme, as our common market cousins say. Huh? Another woman, love. Could somebody else be warming his slippers for him? It happens. Well, there again, not often to 54-year-old self-employed window cleaners. Another woman? Morning. <laughs> You're not after that flaming husband of yours again, are you? Oh, no, no, I, I was just passing. Well, he's more sensitive to come round here, because if I as much as catch a smell of him, I'll pulverise him. His calling days at number 19 are over. You tell him that. We'll be in touch when we're actually taking on staff, all right? Goodbye. Hello, love. What brings you here? Still in the throes, I see. Throes? Oh, interviewing. Oh, yes. It's not as easy as you are might they, think. Uh, are they all like that? Pardon? The, the women you're interviewing, are, are they all like the one that just left? How do you mean? Well, young and rather... Ah, no, no, no. I wish they were. No, I've had all sorts. I've had tall, thin, fat, long, short. You know, women come in a great variety of sizes. More so than men, I often think. Yes, I suppose we do. In fact, yes. I have had Bet Lynch and Betty Turpin here. Here? After a job? Yes. Have you given them one? No. Nope. Why? Well, Betty is totally unsuitable. She's had no experience in the trade at all. And I can hardly offer Bet a job if I turn Betty down. I can't. I think of the trouble that would cause. Hey. What's she got to say to Gail that could be private? Search me. Unless she's after another trouser suit, Chief. No, I don't think even Mrs Walker's got cheek enough to go buying new clothes when she reckons she's too poor to keep us two in work. As you know. <laughs> Are you two a couple of stone statues or something? Oh, sorry, Mrs Sharples. Yes, lovely. I'm up stout. Right. Are you in a drink? <clears throat> if you please. Well, I wouldn't be asking if I wasn't. Right, I'd laugh a mile. It's in a very funny oh, mood. Wednesday night. Yeah. yeah. He got a little tiny bottle of rum from the corner shop because it's a bit cheaper from there, you know. And then he came in here and tried to drink it. Well, her ladyship went mad. So it's soaking. Mm. 
Hey dear, no wonder folk get fed up with the old ones. They like kids, you know. They do daft things, and when they're told about it, they pull their faces. But you don't get up to all them little tricks, do you, Mrs. Sharples? I'm not old, don't I? There, don't bother to say thank you. Hey, our pub's places where folks can drink her, aren't they? Because any walker will tell him me they aren't. Shut up, you daft crate egg, and suck your beer. Right, hey, will you have a nip? Hey? In your stout. Now you're talking. Cheers. Cheers. Now, this is how we should have gone about it in the first place. Well, we'll leave it at that then, shall we, dear, for the moment? Yeah, all right. Very strange. Now, listen. Mosey over and sort of casually and nonchalantly knock it out of Potter what that were all about. We're both well. That's what I like to see, psychic barmaids. Can I have another gin in there, please, to see me through the afternoon? I'll have a pint for Alf and a oh, glass sorry. of lemonade for Dizzy Liz here. It's all right. I'm not dependent on alcohol for my vital and vivid personality. Oh, you will be, won't she, Alf? I never had any vital or whatever personality. In fact, I don't think I had any personality at all. Uh, you get some, will you, Betty? Oh, Gail? Yeah. Mrs. Walker's not been buying out new at your shop, has she? Get to find out. No. <laughs> Thinking of doing a she? No. No. Only I thought that was what you were talking about just now. It wasn't. It seemed very hush hush. No, it was. Elsie, you can scrub my drink. I'll see you back at the shop. If I saw him to pass the council officers at this time, I just might accidentally bump into this gorgeous fellow. Mmm, chance would be a fine thing. Oh, she she get very far there, did you? You reckon you could have done any better? Could have done worse. Uh, only work has served here. Let's see how book and give us a couple of pints, love. What do you mean, darling? Uh, oh, no, nothing, thanks, Sam. I only want a bottle to take out for me dinner, you know. Be with you in a minute, love. Not in any hurry. It could come to that, you know. Huh? Having to show your union card before you can get a drink. Uh, I won't be surprised where things are going. I don't know what they're frightened of, you know. I mean, the bosses stopped bossing years ago. That's all to do with power, then. Power. It's not to do with capitalism or Marxism or any of them underisms. Them's just different names for power. Who gets the official cars and the coppers salute. One thing it's got now to do with the real needs of the people, they and me. You know, that's the longest speech I've ever heard you say. Oh, I can be very articulate when I'm roused, and politics is one thing what rouses me. Politics is too important to be left to the politicians, mate, whatever breed they are, in Parliament or out of it. Two pints, Len. Ta. Oh. Now, what were it, Tilda? Uh, just a light out to take out, please. Right. Have you managed to get a message to your husband yet? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I have. Well, I haven't seen him, have you? Haven't you? No, I haven't. And another day you won't be able to see the curtains through my windows. <laughs> How does he do it, Hilda? What? Well, run a window cleaning business without actually cleaning any windows. I mean, he's cracked it, hasn't he? He doesn't need to change base metal into gold or even run a bingo hall. He does clean windows. Not many, love. Oh, and he managed to boot himself to death every day and all. And where is he now? They're flying off. I've heard he started using cocktail bar at Midland. <laughs> ah, it was all dressed up to go with him. <laughs> what I would like to know is where Mrs. Ogden was this morning. Well, he weren't doing your work properly here, love. <laughs> Hilda. Hilda, come along, dear. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know you. Come on. What am I going to do, Mrs. Walker? You're going to have a cup of tea and calm yourself. He's gone for good, I know he has. Now, Hilda, please. Well, he must have done. I mean, why else? Now, why should you think that, Hilda? I mean, Mr. Ogden, if he's nothing else, is a home bird. If not in the geographical sense, then in the domestic. Hilda. Oh, we had a big row. Harsh words was exchanged, especially by me. And... Oh, but I, I, I'd cut my tongue out, Mrs. Walker, if it had only bring him back a word, honest. How long has he been gone? Three days. You haven't heard anything? No, not a word. Well, have you checked the places he might have gone to, dear? Your Travers, for instance. Oh, he wouldn't have gone there. That away on holiday in Madeira. Madeira? Really? Has he any other friends, relatives? Well, none as I know of. I suppose he could have been taken ill or had an accident. Well, I rung the infirmary and this morning I went down to the police. Well, there you are. They'll find him in a jiffy. I don't think so. They didn't hold out much hope. 
like I said, it's a free country and he's a grown fella. He can go anywhere he chooses. Well, I must say, I think that's a very cavalier attitude to take. Now, you drink your tea, dear, and I'll get on to the police. I have friends in high places. Anne Walker of the Rovers Return, Coronation Street. Could I speak to the Chief Constable, please? You don't have a Chief Constable anymore. Well, I must say, I think that's a retrograde step. Really, I do think the public should have been informed. She's ringing Chief Constable. We don't have one. They told her that. What does Hilda want with the Chief Constable? Stan could be a jug. Well, there's been no police around here. We'd have seen them. Uh, What's the latest? Well, Mrs Walker's ringing the police. He'll be in trouble, pound to a penny. Well, Alf thinks we would have heard. You are right, Albert? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, n I never felt better. Got a funny look on your face. Thank you, love. You're getting boiled. Well, I'm only for rum. A couple of tots more like, and anybody will think it's on our pound. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I see. Well, all I can say is, it seems a very poor return for all my rates and taxes if the police cannot stir themselves to find a poor, distraught woman's husband, who's probably equally distraught himself. If you ask me, you spend far too much time hounding motorists. What do they say? They're looking into it, dear. I insisted that they should. Mm. That's what they told me this morning. Well, the police are rather overstretched these days. Oh, I think he's gone for good, Mrs. Walker. I bet I never set eyes on him again. So I think, girls. Right, try along. And you'll be standing by those pumps at half past five because I shall return. The BBC set the clocks by you, Leonard. I hey, won't be surprised. Try Ta along. Ta Do you know, you could lose us a lot of custom behaving like this, Mrs. Turpin. I mean, we get a very sensitive class of folk oh, around here. Right. You'll get those jobs over there. I'll state my chastity on it. You're not risking much, are you? Hey, where are you going, Hilda? Still? I'm not going to see her. I'm going to see Ernie Bishop. I've seen him, haven't oh. I? <laughs> Caught you, Albert Tatlock. I knew you were up to summit if Mrs Walker... Well, I've kept telling him, but he's not far off being a dipsomaniac. Oh, dear. Look who's talking. And she's shot more than half a bottle herself. Mrs. Sharp. Only to keep him company. Oi, I'm off. You're wasting your time. We'll see. Talk with her. Well, it's a long story, Mrs. Sharples, but uh, if you've any of that corner shop room left, I'll tell it you while I help you to supper. I don't want to hear your story. Well, you'll have to, won't you? Or I'll blab to Mrs. Walker. Well? <laughs> Go on, get a glass. That's better. <laughs> Wipe that daft smile off your face. Have you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> Come on. Hello, Betty. What can I do for you? Come and sit down. Oh, thank you. Uh, I hope you don't think I'm cheeky, but... Uh, well, I know Bet's been over here and what he said to her and all that, yeah. but... Uh, well, um, I was wondering if you could be a bit more sort of definite. About jobs? Well, yes, you see. I mean, if we hand in our notice over there, and then we don't... Uh, well, I mean, we'll be in Dickie's meadow, won't we? Mm. Look, Betty, I'm not going to beat about the bush. Not with you and Bet. I've told enough little white lies in the last two days. You'll be hearing from us, Mrs Brown. We'll be in touch, Mrs Smith. Knowing perfectly well we'll be doing nothing of the sort. Ah, uh, not very nice, is it? You know, I mean, raising people's hopes. No, it isn't, Betty. That's why I'm not going to raise yours. There is very little chance of you getting a job here. You just haven't had the experience, love. What about that? No. Well, she's had experience. Yeah, but not as much as some of the applicants. There's a lot of competition for jobs these days, you know. I see. Oh, well. Thanks for being straight with me, Ernest. That's the least I could do. I'm sorry, I really am. Well, I mean, it's not as if we've chucked a jobs up at the Rovers, but, uh, ooh, the atmosphere. Not very nice. I can imagine. Mm. Mrs Walker's already paid me a little visit. Has she? Why? Didn't like the idea of me giving her staff jobs. The old... Wait till I tell Bet. Oh, the old... Oh! 
Now you're not to worry yourself, Mrs. Ogden, understood? Do my best, Mrs. Walker. And Mr. Ogden will be back as sure as God made little apples. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just a minute. Now, put a drop of that in your tea if you're feeling very low. Thanks very much, Mrs. Walker. You've been very kind. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I made an exhibition of myself. Think nothing of it. Thank you. Yes. What's going on at the Ogden family walk? Oh, nothing to trouble you with, Mrs. Sharp. It's just something that rather have kept in the family. And with an understanding friend, of course. Well, I reckon he's been making a fool of himself in Corporation Park. Is it a very funny age, Stanley? Like this one here. What are you going to do with him? Leave him here if he don't wake up. Well, you can for me, love. Hey, Fett, here. What's up? We're not going to get a job over there, you know. Never in a month of Sundays. Who says? Ernie uh, Bishop. I've no experience and you've not got enough. Oh, what's he talking about? I mean, I worked in... Brooklyn. That's what he says. That's not all. Madam's been over there trying to queer our pitch. How? Tell him not to poach her staff. The old bat. That's what I said. Well, <laughs> nearly. Right, come on. Hey, wh where? Have it out with her. Now, hang on. We've no jobs to go to, you know. That's true. Oh, there you are, Elizabeth. I wonder where you disappeared to. Yeah. <laughs> Still, I suppose now you're leaving, we can expect a certain lowering of standards. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's wrong with the country today. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going shopping. You will close up for me, will you? Yeah. Uh, we're not definitely said we're going, Mrs Walker. No, we've not handed our notices in or out like that. Oh, but it's implicit, really, isn't it? In any case, I'm sorry, but I have started to make alternative staffing arrangements. Like what? Well, like Gail, coming in the evenings. Seems very keen. You will show her the ropes, I know. Well, I'll be blowed. Now that I know what house feels like, we get subsidies. Hey, what about Albert? He's still asleep. Asleep? Just come and have a look. You've got to laugh. I feel like, more like crying myself. No, I mean that. Oh, I never should have listened to you. Party time when Lisa tries to persuade Andrew to have a night out. Meanwhile, Sue tells Moira about John. Drama in families next here on Granada Plus. It'll be the death of me. Do you know, I've son at home been looking at me for three days. <laughs> there we are. £5.31, is that all right? Oh, it'll have to be, thanks. Still, it'll see us over the holiday. Yeah. 
I was hoping Terry would be able to help me with putting up orders and things like that. But in the mood he's in, I'm not sorry that Gail's taking him off to that party. <laughs> Sounds very uh, hectic across there, doesn't it? Sounds like fun to me. And the stuff Mr Baldwin's taking from me. Well, if that doesn't put a smile on Terry's face, I don't know what will. <laughs> Ernest popped across to let the ladies know he bears them no ill will after that unpleasantness about their payday. Well, one has to try to promote the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Come on, Ernie! You can't Another. Now look, you try that on me and you'll be outside the factory gate with your cards in your hands, all of you. Spoils for. Exactly. Oh, come on! Open a few more bottles, enjoy yourself. <laughs> come on, we've had a spoil. Hey, what about Tom over there? Now look, you must sit on me, you know. I'll set the missus on you. Oh, and you want to see if she's 17 stone if you're bound! Well, she's 18, actually. Are you what you said was the weaker sex? Oh, the fellas love, especially in the head. If you're gonna have a drink, you will have a proper one. All right. <coughs> nice. Nice in here on Zorn, eh? Not bad. Nice. What was that for? Felt like it. Terry. Hi. You're not going to really leave round here, are you? Why not? Fat lot to keep me here. Well, is there? Well, I wouldn't like it if you left. And if it's just a matter of finding a job, why don't you go see Mike Baldwin? Just my answer. Irene has already tackled him. And? No. Supposing I try? Would you? Of course. I thought you'll be getting your foot in a crossroad. Nah, I decided to let them lovely ladies find their own amusements. Oh, poor girls. Might have a little bit of business this afternoon, you never know. Excuse me. Hi, if you like. You don't think Mrs. Walker's forgotten me? Oh, no chance, love. It might be just another customer having a test drive to you, but to her, it's a major social occasion. <laughs> Mr. Abernethy, I haven't kept you waiting. No, no, not at all, Mrs. Walker. Good. Shall we proceed then? Can we have a word with you, Mrs. Walker, please? Not now, if you'll excuse me. Well, we need some more glasses, you know, across at the factory because we're having a party. Just a bottle line. Really? Well, now, shall we discuss the drinks you'll require first? Oh, no, and then we, we can discuss the glasses afterwards. Naturally, I shall let you have them free of charge yes. as a courtesy. Oh, we've got the booze. Yes, you have, haven't you? From the corner shop, I believe. Yeah, but Rena don't have any glasses to lend out, like. No, she doesn't, does she? Well, now, this is my offer. Will you tell Mr Baldwin that he can have as many of my glasses as he requires for your party? The charge will be 50p per glass, all damages and breakages to be paid for at cost. Hmm. Thank you for nothing. Come on, Vera. My pleasure. <laughs> right, Mr Abernethy, all yours. Yeah, seems a nice fella, that, doesn't he? Yeah. If you want to be careful, I'll buy a card off a stranger. I'm going to have a look at it. Yeah, I think I'll have a look, too. Hey, Bet, why don't you mosey across the party? There's no doing here. I've been told to keep away, haven't I? You're doing well, Bert. Nothing wrong, Mrs Walker? No, no. It's just a bigger car than I thought it was. Ah, but a lady like you needs a car with a bit of dignity. Thank you. 
Looks like it was made for you, Mrs. Walker. The colour matches your handbag, you know. Come on, give it a bit of encouragement. Yeah, well, it don't look a bad car, doesn't that? I just hope Mr. Abernethy has more luck with his driver than I did. I heard that, Alf. Now, where's it? There. Looks a treat, doesn't she? Yeah. Fifty pence a glass, me old cat. That's Victor Abbey. Hello, Ernie. <laughs> when the girls come out to play, Georgie Bodge. Can you find me clothes for me, please? Oh, <laughs> you mean to say, look, you've got no clothes. Yeah, no, on. I haven't. <laughs> you get done for that, can't you? Definitely. The beer. <laughs> Ivy, please. What she wants is a little. Hey, Fred. Huh? That Vera you went about with her one time. Off and on, no definite. Why? Oh, nothing. She shoves it all in front window, doesn't she? Some fellas like it that way, don't they? What fellas? What well, fellas that like it like that? Hey, Alf, you don't reckon Mrs. Walker for that car, then, eh? No, I don't. Why not? It's just a job. It's not a woman's car, isn't it? Listen, I've seen lots of women driving them, stacks of them. Yeah, yeah, it's too heavy. There'll be nothing but trouble. Look, if she gets that car, she'll only live to regret it. Listen, if Mrs. Walker wanted a chieftain tank, if she wanted it, she'd get it. There'd be no shift in her. No way. No. Is she married? Who? Oh. Vera. Divorced. I've got some food! Bit of the ladies, man. Who is? Leonard. So are you. Well, I'm only human. Yeah, what about her over there? Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> I'm gonna have another go at him. You're a glutton for punishment, you are. You get nowhere if you don't try. <laughs> Ladies' choice, Mr. Baldwin, and I'm choosing you. So what? Yeah, yeah, that's right, it is, I heard somebody say. Yeah, we're well, not just now, love, I've got a bad back. Oh, you don't dance for your back. No, that's right, besides, it's the boss's duty to dance for the staff. Oh, well, thanks very much. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> have you seen her, Elsie? No, I haven't, love. Have you tried the office? Yeah. Gail's in there with Terry. Is she now? Hey, come on. You know this oh, one. Gail. Oh, come on, let's dance. Nah, I'm not much cock at dancing. All right. Hey, I've always fancied you, Gail. I have. <laughs> no, you said. I uh, know I've not said much, but... But what? I just think it would be really great if me and you could, you know, go around together. Me and you? Yeah, why not? I mean, it bound to change my mind about leaving. It'd make much more sense, wouldn't it, to stay and get a job if, if me and you were... We're going around together, you know, and Irene is always saying, you know, how it's time I settled down. She could be right. Settle down? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a kid anymore, am I? We me? Yeah, if we... You've got to be joking. Why? You've gone off your head. What's all this for here, then? Me and you? Nothing. It's nothing. But you kissed me. You came to shop for me special. You asked for me specially. You were short of fellas. You are a last resort, love, that's all. You're not you, I don't you? A little tart. <laughs> hey, Terry! Terry, come and dance with your Auntie Ivy. I'm sorry, Ivy. Have you seen Gail? Oh, I haven't. I thought she was with you. Now, you be careful with that girl. I shall have me to answer to. I don't know what's the matter with Terry. Either needs a pat on the head or a kick up the uh, jacksie. Uh, remember who you're with. Not a lady, I hope. Only on Sundays and holidays of obligation. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing in there, Annie? Come on, have a drink. How the heck can I? You're too late anyway. The joke's over. <laughs> have you seen Teresa clothes. anyway? She's supposed to be finding my clothes. She's in the oh, first of all, you lose your clothes, then you lose your girlfriend. You're slipping, Annie. Teresa is not my girlfriend. <laughs> and thanks for your help. Anytime, kid. I'm just looking for some glasses, Mr. Oh, oh, tough. Well, you two seem to be enjoying yourself. Yeah, I got everything I need here, mate. Nice party. I'm glad you think so. 
So like a dance? No, she doesn't. I was asking Marie. You tell him no. I do, as a matter of fact. Yeah, what are you doing with that? That's stuck. I know they are. Have heart, Mr. Baldwin. He's got to wear something. Oh, Ernie, I'm sorry I couldn't find none of your own clothes. Oh, no. But these will do it for the time being. They should fit, more or less. Well, better than nothing, I suppose. Thanks a lot, Susan. Poor Ernie. I do feel sorry for him. It must be very embarrassing. I think Ernie's clicked, sir. Uh... Pretty dogs and fellas that's lost their pants. That's had to be his speciality. Come on in, Marie. Let's have that dance. He'll break your feet. Oh, that's a risk I've got to take. After all, he is the boss. <laughs> Record player's broken, Mr Baldwin. Oh, well, it's probably a loose connection. Well, I can't mend it. All right, I'm coming. It's terrible, isn't it, my day? What? The things that we bosses have to do, the responsibilities, the problems. I don't think it's worth bothering about, really. Yeah, yeah, all right. Come, my little lovely. I've got nothing to say. Look, Gail. Are you deaf as well? I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Right, you're sorry. I've still got nothing to say. But I am sorry, Gail. How'd you get on there, Mrs. Walker? Fine. Do you know I did 55 miles an hour on the bypass? Fancy that. Fancy. <laughs> you really don't realise how fast you're going in a big car, do you? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Avanath, and I'll be in touch. Closing time, Beth? Yes, Mrs. Walker. Time, please, gentlemen and Eddie Yeo. Did you clinch a sale then, mate? I'm not sure. She seemed a bit, um, non-committal. Still, where does uh, non-committal is always a chance of committal, isn't it? I suppose so. Well, I must go my way. Customers to see you now. Cheerio. Cheerio. See you around. Yep. Hey, do you know him? Hey, where would I know him from? Good afternoon, Ernie. Do you know that little outfit really suits you? Hey, you look just like John Wayne. I used to wear gear like that in Walton. Yes, all right, all right. Before we have any more little jokes... Who's joking? It just... <laughs> It just so happened that I had some coffee spilt on my suit over at the factory there. I know what you've done, Ernie. You went and opened your Chrissy present before the day. Emily's little surprise. It's very naughty, that Ernie, coming in here, showing off. I came in here because I had to. Emily isn't back from work yet and I haven't got my keys with me. May I please use your toilet? Oh, be my guest, love. Leave your back outside, did you? It's very trendy, is that? <laughs> <laughs> Anything wrong? No, love, not a thing. <laughs> oh, going back to the party? No. Oh, good, you can help me here. I'm up to my eyes in it. Sorry, Reenie. Where are you going? I'm going up to Lancaster to see me ma'am, then after that, I don't know, I might try joining up again. But, Terry! Why not, Reenie? At least in the army I had some mates and some money in my pocket. Felt like I belonged somewhere. It weren't all beer and skittles, but it was summer. Oh, oh Terry, I mean... I could only say no. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I really don't. Well, look at me, Reenie. What have I got here, eh? Note. I've got no money, no job, no sign of a job. And mates, well, that lot down at Rovers. Never really fitted in, did I? But what about me? What about you? I mean, leaving me on me own to cope. It's not like I had Harry to fall back on anymore. Listen, Reenie, you've got this place, haven't you? And isn't that what's really important to you in the end, eh? You can't just walk out. I mean, I thought you were beginning to fancy Gail. She, she's a nice girl. She's a bit young, maybe, but she seems to like you. I mean, you'll never have a regular girlfriend, Terry, if you pick him up and just throw him down Listen, like that. Listen, Reenie. I'm coming back from the party like that. I don't expect Gail like that. See ya. Happy Christmas. All right. Oh! Get up, bro. Hey, Teddy! Teddy! What? All the best, mate. See ya. Yeah. Happy Christmas! Funny lad, Teddy. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> This is it. 
No, come here, I say. Do you know a glass of port and lemon? You're anybody's. No, you are, Ivy. Anybody's? Yeah. Yes? Hey, these are your earnings, love. He's been looking for them. Yeah, he has. Oh, it were a lovely party. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Sure. Ivy and Vera, they brought your clothes back. So I see. You wait till after the holidays. I'll have their jobs, I will. You mark my words. Why you, Ernest? Hmm? Well, they didn't pull Mr. Baldwin's trousers off, did they? Or Len's? No, they did not. Then why did they take yours off? You didn't just let them, did you? I struggled furiously, but there were too many for me. You're sure? You weren't entering into the spirit of the thing. No, I was not. Now, can we please forget it, Emily? Forget? About you running around the factory, practically naked among all those drunken women? Why didn't you come straight home the minute all this disgusting behaviour began? I only, I'd only just started my speech when they, 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 they fell upon me. It's a pretty ghastly experience, believe me. Well, you seem rather prone to ghastly experiences with the opposite sex, Ernest. What would stagnate at the gaps oh, be? Oh, Emily, why do you always assume the worst? I couldn't leave the factory because they had taken my clothes away. I spent most of the time frozen stiff in the toilet. I wasn't naked. I had my underclothes on. I didn't enjoy one single moment of it. I, I wish to heaven I'd never gone to the party. Take that ridiculous outfit off. And particularly those trousers. Good evening, Elsie. One tonic, please. Eh? Hey? One tonic water. Oh, like that, is it? Twelve P. Twelve P. Will you pay cash or shall we send you a bill? No two ways about it, Mrs. Walker. That is one cracking good motor car, that is. Aye, for touring. Hey? Well, Mrs. Walker isn't taking a family of four all over Europe, is she? All she wants you to safe, reliable little motor for knocking around Weatherfield. You do yourself a favour, Mrs. Walker. You buy it. Do yourself another favour, Mrs. Walker. Go to a reliable firm, Costigan's down the road. I wouldn't trust them fly by nights as far as I could chuck them. Yeah, well, I mean, second hand car dealers, they're all sort of tarred with the same brush, aren't they? Whatever oh, you find. Oh, now, there, I can't agree with you. I flatter myself I'm a shrewd judge of character, and I have no doubt Mr. Abernethy is totally trustworthy. Oh, well, whether, of course, I shall buy his car. Will you? That's quite another matter, isn't it? Is he? It's still going on. And it was dead and wounded, lying about all over the place when I left. Mind you, one or two of them were still waving the flag. So Charles? Well, the boss for one, and one or two of the girls, you know, them with staying power. Vera? Hmm. Could be. And that Marie, of course. I don't know where they get the energy from. Mrs. Walker? Two minutes. All right, Mrs. Walker. Where's she off to? Oh, search me. Are you on your own? I think so, yeah. Where's your staff? Well, I've gone home, I hope. <laughs> you thought I was up this something, didn't you? Hey? Anky banky with anyone. Don't trust me, Ven. I'm not with some that work here, love. Like who? Look, one word from you, and there's quite a few what would be standing outside number five with all the scruffy traps packed, ready to jump into my place. Ah, yeah. Glad you mentioned it. They are for you. What's that? Christmas present. What? It's a key to the front door, stupid. To our house? You can move in any time you like. Coming up next on Granada Plus, families.
Oh, anything for me this morning? Oh. Afraid not, no. They all seem to be for number nine, Mr. Fairclough. Still, they often are in being a councillor. Morning. Morning, Elizabeth. You've not slept very well, have you? Does it show? Yeah, it does. Look, I told you to take something. Well, I've not been very keen on sleeping tablets since that little mishap I had. Well, it's better than lying awake half the night worrying yourself sick. Me breathalyzed. So ridiculous. I've never had too much to drink in my life, despite being virtually wedded to the stuff. Look, it's all a mistake. Take my word for it. I mean, those blood tests they're taking, that'll prove Well, it, it must be a mistake. Yes. Well, it's a nightmare. It certainly isn't true. Look, love, I think I will go back to bed for yeah. an hour. Thank you for coming in so early. Pleasure. <laughs> Where are you at work? I'm going in a minute. It's nearly ten o'clock. So what? What's the point of opening up? There's nobody about, no customers. It's a waste of time, not to mention electricity. You know, I'll say one thing for you. When you decide to go into a decline, you definitely go into a decline. I've got reasons. Have you? Because, oh, my head's like a flaming boiler. Oh. You know, Summer, I think you flatter yourself thinking young Terry's leaving because of you. You know, he's been fed up for a bit. Who says? Young Deirdre told me. He still left the same day I had a row with him. And Reenie definitely thinks I'm to blame. Hey. You're not frightened of Rene Bradshaw, are you, by any chance? No. Is that why you're not going to Bet's party? Because Rene will be there. No. It is, isn't it? Now, look, if she opens her gob, oh, I'll stop her... Oh, it's not that, Elsie. I'm not frightened of her. I'm sick of rows. I seem to have nothing else lately, nothing but trouble with folk. I'm beginning to wonder if there ain't something wrong with me. Oh, there's not wrong with you that a nice old fellow of your own age wouldn't cure. Find me one. A nice one, I mean. I know plenty of the other sort. I'm not 20 yet, Elsie, but they've all been snapped up already. They have, all the nice ones. I'm on the shelf already. Hmm. Well, in that case, there's not much chance for me, is there? You've had your chances, plenty of them. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I'm just fed up. It's New Year's Eve day after tomorrow. I'm not going anywhere. No parties, no nothing. I might as well be dead. You are fed up, aren't you? Yes, I am. I wish I'd never heard of Roy Thorne or Terry Bradshaw or anybody else for that matter. Now, look, look, look. look. J just sit there and I'll make us a cup of tea because cause I need one myself. Oh, love, I could tell you to cheer up and tomorrow you'll forget about it all and it'll all be brighter, but that's not what you want, is it? No. What you want is a good cry. Well, I've one, Chuck. Here, use my anky. <coughs> <coughs> hey, can't you make less noise? You're waking Mrs Walker. Some of us have been up since seven o'clock, you know. Some of us aren't working sick like she is. Ah, oh, well, it's all relativity, isn't it? You reckon? Well, being worried sick about being drunk in charge of your own grand motor car and being worried sick about where your next jam butt is coming from. Like I say, it's all relativity, and I know which I prefer. She was not drunk in charge of her car. Ah, well, why was she breathalyzed then? Why was she carted off to the police station and given indelicate tests? What indelicate tests? Well, don't you know? No. Asked to provide samples. Blood samples? <laughs> I've heard different. Hey, she wasn't drunk. Now, I look at it this way. I've never been carted off to the police station, never in my life. But it's not the first time for her, is it? She were accosted for being a soccer hooligan that time. So if you ask me, it's not just a chapter of accidents. Must be somewhat in her character. Like Dark Side of the Moon. Hilda, if you don't shut up, I'll crack you on top of the end with this bottle. No good trying to hide the truth, you know. It'll come out in court as like as not any road. Elder! Yeah. Really? Elizabeth! What with buckets clanking and doors banging, and now you're raising your voice. It really is too much, especially when I so desperately need a little bit of tranquility. Ah, you're not feeling too good, Mrs Walker. Do you know, I don't wonder all you've got on your plate. I was only saying to Betty here, wasn't I? 
It's a wonder that poor woman's alive, I said. All the bad luck she's had. And it's not as though it's just between you and the police, is it? I mean, there's going to be all the attending publicity, like... Well, like, ex mayoress has one over the eight. I'll just go and mop outside. Oh, that flaming woman! Why you keep putting up with her, Mrs Walker? I'll never know. Puzzled me for years. I think she's a sort of hair shirt. <laughs> a perpetual <laughs> penance. I think that must be it. Where's Bet? Well, you told her she could have the morning off. You know, to get ready for the party tonight. So I did. Yeah. Do you know? I think I'm losing my reason. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Where shall I put it? Just for it's in the kitchen. Get your hands off, Yates! Only testing if they're fresh, that's they all. They are! Right, sir, uh, anything else you want doing? I can't think of anything, love. Hang on, here. Go and get yourself a drink. Oh, no. Favour for a mate, you know. Well, thanks anyway. Now, I've invited you to my party tonight, haven't I? Yeah. Just making sure. Oh. Very nice. Very nice indeed. He might Baldwin knows how to treat a girl, doesn't he? You see what you could have had, Eddie, if you'd have done your homework. In luck for a change, Mrs. Walker. And a rule for you too, Mr. Fairclough. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. Bye. Is it a circular, Mrs. Walker? I don't think so. Kenneth. Mm -hmm. Would you open it for me, please? I suddenly feel rather sick. Open it? Oh, I see you think it might be from the... Uh... No, you're right, Mrs Walker. It's not from the police. It's from your insurance company. It's about the insurance on your car. Thank God. <laughs> so if it had been from the police, I'd know the worst by now. <laughs> oh, not the worst, Mrs Walker. Look, I keep telling you, it'll be all right. Elizabeth, how are you usually so optimistic about your own troubles? Yeah, of course I am. Very fortunate. Mm. How much is the insurance, Kenneth? Two hundred pounds. It's a lot, isn't it? Well, you come in a very expensive category, I'm afraid, as far as insurance is concerned, Mr Walker. Being a new driver, no no claims bonus, and then this is a high-risk accident area. Do you know? If I had known the pitfalls and the expense connected with driving a car, I'd never have looked at one in the first place. Yeah, well, look at it this way, Mrs Walker. I mean, you've had one shot today. You're not likely to get another. Elizabeth? Yeah? If you have any more cheery little thoughts for the day, I shall begin to think that your real name is Patience Strong. Well said. She's a teeny bit sensitive, I'd say. I was only trying to help. No. You've not had bad news on all, have you? Ned? No, no. What bad news would I get? No, give us another couple of pints. That's if you're having one, can I? Oh, why not? One of those lost weeks, isn't it? You see, I feel responsible. If she hadn't have insisted on driving me home, well, she would never have been behind the wheel of a car in that condition in the first place. Well, heck, it's safer to be poor. At least I'm never likely to be arrested for being drunk in charge, not even of a bicycle. <laughs> Is Annie? Yes, go on through. Thank you. I don't really feel like that. <coughs> she won't be much comfort to Annie Walker. How do you mean, Mrs. Sharples? Well, it's the best bit of scandal the Lady Vittles have had in years. Well, I'm surprised to see you on your feet, and I really am. If I were in your shoes, I'd be prostrate, sobbing in a darkened room. Yes, well, I'm made of rather sterner stuff than that. Well, you must be. I've been on tranquilizers, and I was only sitting in the car with you. By the way, Nellie Harvey sends her condolences. Ha! Oh, does she? Yes, she said we mustn't leave the country without letting Anne know we're thinking of her. We're off tonight, you know, to Austria. Really, tonight? Yes, but well, we all need a holiday. What with the state of the country and the terrible autumn we've had. Now, that's what you want to do as soon as this is all over. Get away! Away from prying eyes and wagging tongues. I don't think newspapers should be allowed to print court cases, do you? Well, it's another punishment, isn't it? Having your name all over the paper. <gasps> and what's the brewery's attitude going to be, I wonder? Still, you have been in the trade such a long time, longer than any of us. That should stand you in good stead. Kitty. Yes, Anne? 
What I don't understand is how that breathalyzer was positive. Now, you were with me, you know what happened. I had one glass of punch at the luncheon. Mm. Oh, surely even I can drink as much as that. What I mean is, the breathalyzer must have been defective, a mechanical fault. And there's one thing you're forgetting. What's that? The strength of Nellie's punch. The strength? Yeah, didn't you know? Oh, she's very generous with the brandy especially and the liqueur. I mean, half a glass and I feel quite squiffy. I did on Monday, actually. I suppose I should have warned you, but... Well, it never occurred to me, you know, not being a driver myself. Still, I shall never forgive myself, though, if the worst does come to the worst and you're prosecuted. <laughs> Gang of mine, eating something. Come on in, Mrs. Sharples. I believe I'm invited to this do of yours tonight. I left word at the pub. If you feel like coming, you'll be very welcome. Thank you very much. You coming then? No. Oh. I may be an old-fashioned, bad-tempered, interfered in old biddy bet Lynch, but I'm no hypocrite. I'd go along with that, Mrs. Sharples. I don't approve of your setup here. According to my lights, those I've tried to live with for 70-odd years, I think it's wrong for a man and woman to be living under the same roof when they're not married. And it's twice as wrong when he's wed to somebody else. I'm Mike's housekeeper, Mrs. Sharples. Oh, don't come back. Don't insult my intelligence by asking me to believe that rubbish. That's for the likes of Annie Walker to believe who doesn't want to face up to the truth. I am his housekeeper. Oh, all right, I won't insult your intelligence. Thank you very much. But why bother coming round to tell me all this? I mean, I more or less knew your attitude already. Unless you couldn't resist another chance to call me names. You invited me. And it's good manners to reply to an invitation one way or the other. Yes, Mrs. Sharples. Good night. Good night. Mrs. Sharples. What? What if nobody's getting hurt? And it's making me and I hope Mike happy. It's still wrong. Doing the right thing comes first. Happiness, a very poor second. That could be a pretty wintry philosophy, Mrs. Sharples. Nobody knows that better than I do. I suppose that's what I last year, I did. Hey, Paul. After party, are we? Ah, uh, yes. yes. You go, Mrs. Walker. I'll hold the fort here. Go on. It'll do you good. I doubt it. I certainly wouldn't do the party any good, not the mood I'm in. I don't think I'll bother going either. Well, what's the matter with you? Oh, it's nothing I put my finger on. Mm. And human nature's a funny thing, isn't it? Mm, funny peculiar, I presume you mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, go on. Go on what? Amplifier. Oh, no, I've got nothing more to say. I mean, it's just that... Human nature is a funny thing. It isn't me who's affecting everybody, is it? Dizzy Tech. He's probably been boozing all afternoon down at the Legion. You're dead right. I've had about half a dozen pints of bitter, but I'm still stone cold sober. But like I say, human, human nature's, nature's a funny, funny thing. thing. I'd better get off of this party before I become infected. <laughs> I would, Kenneth, I would. <laughs> Come on, Betty, it takes two to tango. To tango, maybe, but not to do what you are doing. You're better off on your own, love. Yeah, I've always been ahead of me time, like that Leonardo da Vinci. There, yeah, you're a lucky cat. I know. Oh, it's just what I told her. Do you think he looks as if he's got out in his post office savings book? Doesn't give you that impression, does he? No. Mike hasn't got a brother or anything like that, has Sorry, he? love. No. What happened to that sailor you used to have? Oh, God, it's a long story. Aren't they all? Um. Gonna put another one on? Yeah, put another one on there. Hilda. How long's she been up there? Fifteen minutes. What a lavatory. Everywhere but. <laughs> Hello, Eldie. We were just about to send a search party out for you. <laughs> Aye, the bathroom's beautiful. Although, mind you, a shower's not quite a sunken bath, is it? Oh, I find them very drafty sunken baths. Mm. I, I had to look at the bedrooms and all. Well, just from the doors, like, as they was open. Yes, I left them open, especially. Which one's yours? Which one would you like me to have? 
One with the black sheets, I'll bet. Like them, dear. They're all right. Erin's down sleeping now, Del. <laughs> I dare say our sheets get washed off nothing yours do, Rita Littlewood. So who's counting, Hilda? Who's counting? <laughs> Mother, what you have it? I seem to be forever asking you about. <laughs> Music to my ears. I'll have a gin and tonic. <laughs> that's it with your mother. Yeah, I'll have the same. <laughs> Hey, Gail, what about a glide, Gail? Yeah. yeah, all right, if you can promise to keep off me feet. Come on. Greeny. Gail. <clears throat> Where's Mavis? On her way, hopefully. She'll be doing herself up from top to bottom. No part of her left untouched. It'll be pine bath salts, cucumber soap, <laughs> lemon shampoo, the lot. She'll walk through that door glowing like 100 watt bulbs. <laughs> well, what do you say, Ken? Morals before happiness at other road about. Well, a lot of people would say that's what's wrong with society today. Too many people chasing the easy life, you know, to hell with the virtues of temperance, prudence, chastity and hard work. Oh, you're a big help. Come and have a dance with me. Unless you want uh, Bradshaw and Littlewood to put bids in for you. You know, I reckon if I play my card right, I could enjoy myself tonight. No danger. Right. Have you seen her? Oh, greedy, I call it. Gee. Oh. Yeah. Hey, where have you been? I've been getting ready. I thought you'd all have been dressed up. It's a grotty little house party, love, not a steak ball. Oh, I do feel out of place. I wish I'd have asked. You look very nice, love. Now, you go and sit down and I'll get you a drink. Go on, Hey, maybe so you're going on somewhere afterwards, are you? Oh, sure. <laughs> Ooh, talk about a mausoleum. Got another milk start, Mrs Sharples. I'll drink so much stronger if I can afford it. Mm. You need it in a place like this. Anything you like, Mrs Sharples, on me. That's very kind of you. I'll have a port. And I'll have a point. <laughs> it's quite true what you said earlier on. What, You're drinking like a fish and it's having no effect. <laughs> it comes along practice, that. <laughs> Not nice, Mrs Sharples, and me treating you and all. No, I don't know which side my bread's buttered on, do I? I'm sorry. <laughs> I take it her worship's not putting in an appearance tonight. Don't look like it. Well, she's everything to worry about, hasn't she? Yeah. One pot, lovey. <laughs> Go heck. Mr. Fairclough? Tony? Mrs. Walker not in? Uh, yes. Uh, she's in the living room. Uh, do you mind if I go through? I've got some news for her. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Good news, is it? What do you think? Come to tell her when she's up in court, I shouldn't wonder. Come in. Tony. Mrs. Walker. What brings you here? You? What you've been getting up to, eh? Breathalyzed at your age. You've heard. You haven't had any chance heard the result of the blood test, have you? That's why I'm here. Below the limit. You were below the limit of alcohol in your blood. You're in the clear, Mrs. Walker. Are you sure? Positive, I saw the report. You'll be getting it official tomorrow or the day after. But I thought Mrs. Walker will be going bonkers, so I'll slip in and tell her. Mum's the word, though. Oh, of course. Oh, thank you, Tony. Thank you very much indeed. What a relief. I'll have a pint on the house next time I come in. A hundred pints. I might keep you to that. Cheerio. What did Tony say? Was it about uh, marvellous news? The blood test proves I wasn't over the limit. Nowhere near, in fact. Oh, great. Hey, what a relief. Mm. <laughs> I'm just ringing Nellie Harvey and Kitty mm. because I think they'll enjoy their holiday in Austria much more if they know I'm in the clear. Yeah, I'm sure they will. <laughs> Hello? Oh, could I speak to Mrs. Harvey, please? And Walker here. Mm. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. They've already left. Oh, dear. <laughs> I've got Jansen in me blood, you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's me granddad. He was in the Black Watch. He could balance a bayonet on the end of his nose. Tell you where you've not got it. Where? In your feet. Ken? Hmm? Did you start courting young? Seriously? Really? I was still at university, yeah. Why? What was my point? And what point is that? Don't matter. 
I'm not courting now or anything. I'm a phobia man. Oh. Have you seen a satty like three old crows? Well, there's no fellas, is there? Where's Lang? Search me. Gail's enjoying herself as usual. Rainy. What? Leave Gail out of this. Anything Terry Gotti asks for. Well, that's a matter of opinion. It's my opinion. Well, it's not mine. I suppose you've noticed that Mavis and Hilda are still missing. Oh, well, we'll be showing her the black sheets. Exactly. I just hope that daft Mavis don't go out and buy some, because I have a feeling her Aunt Edie wouldn't approve somehow. Rita. What? Come and dance with oh, me. Oh, my God. Eh? Well, it's better than sitting here having a joint season up. Oh, we look at this. This one I'm going to. I know. Oh, oh, are you going a bit fella? No, you are. Oh. Can you leave? Yeah. It's <laughs> very nice though, isn't it? I mean, more tasteful than I expected. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there has been money spent, oh. have there? But uh, doesn't hide the fact that it's sensory. <laughs> oh. Good evening. Oh, good evening. What's going on? <laughs> We're having a party. You are? Well, bet. <laughs> Oh, bet, eh? Why didn't you know? <laughs> Mike, <clears throat> what are you doing there? You weren't supposed to be back till tomorrow. Obviously. I'm, um, uh, well, you don't mind. I'm just having a housewarming. You could have waited till I got in. Yes, I'm sorry. Well, now I am here. What am I doing without a drink in my hand? Uh, Coming up. And thanks. Eddie, put another record on. All right, Jill. Hey, are we glad to see you? Do you want to choose? Yeah, when I've had a drink. Swine. Evening, everybody. Hello, love. Hi, Len, darling. What are you having? Uh, just beer for me. Oh, 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 oh. So you've decided to honour us with your presence at last. I don't feel much like it, I can tell you. So are you sickening for someone? Well, nope. I've got a letter. So? From my Stanley. Stan, your lad? What's he want you haven't heard from him? Seen him in ages. I'll see him tomorrow. With his fiancée. They are Len Love. Ah, oh, thank you, darling. Do you realise we very nearly had our first round? We will when I get you alone. <laughs> Coming up next on Granada Plus, families.